I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. <laughs> Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, as you see, we have a title. Soon we'll open our Skype so Muslims, if they like, they can join us and they can call. Uh, before I start talk about uh, the topic today, uh, we saw in the news that Muslims are uh, very upset because somebody is he did burn the Quran. And I don't know really what the Muslims are trying to prove to us, because if you wanted us to prove, burn the Quran, we can burn it. I mean, because burning cars will not stop us from burning the Quran. But for me, I believe that burning the Quran is not worth it. I mean, I need the Quran so I can laugh at the Quran. Um, so I say, you know, laugh at it, don't burn it, because we need it. Uh, however, I mean, when they do exaggerate with their violence and the stupidity, uh, you are encouraging people to do the opposite, you know, you are being stupid. At the same time, I say that the government in Sweden are really stupid government. Just deport 10 of those people, you will see all of them, they will behave. Just deport them, send them back where they come home. You don't like this country? Go back home. But, you know, stupid European countries, what we can say. And when I say stupid European countries, I mean your government, but you are stupid too, to vote for such a government. Anyway, so today we go to our topic, but before we start, uh, uh, we have to go uh, to some comments. Sorry, my page flipped to uh, yeah, Sheikh uh, Omad page. Uh, we have uh, some comment made by some people. That's why I was a little bit, little bit uh, late for you, because I was trying to read the comments in the comment section. Here we have a Muslim, always Muslim, by the way, they use fake names and, you know, suddenly, suddenly uh, Fatima, she is Sandra and uh, Muhammad, he is John. Uh, you know, it's just a game, so they can make you feel, you know, like, oh, this is not a Muslim. Here you will see a Muhammadan, her name is Sandra, as she killed herself, Sandra Fatima Aisha. Uh, you know, the Muslims, they argue about uh, the sign of the resurrection or the death of Jesus. And uh, the funny is, uh, I don't know how silly, how stupid this argument is, because even your stupid Quran agreed that Jesus was, or he is alive. And if this is the case, then we need to ask ourselves, how? You know, can a Muslim man tell us how? Every human being is, burn, is born sorry, uh, to, to die, you know, from dust to dust. Muhammad himself is dead. The Quran confirmed that all messengers, they died. See, the Quran did not even leave one exception. Like there's nobody in the Quran did not die. If we go to the city book of Muhammad, we will find this. The yellow pages of Muhammad. Uh, the Quran always used the word قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ All messengers before, before that person pass, pass away. And this is a statement is obviously made by a foolish man. His name is Muhammad. Because in one hand, he says that 
all messengers before Muhammad they pass away, as you see here, chapter 3, verse number 144. And then, on the other hand, he says, Jesus is alive. You know? So, uh, uh, when, a, when a Muhammad and he argue about the Bible, suddenly he became expert. He want to explain to us the Bible, and he is expert in his book. But he cannot explain a single line in his stupid book. And this is why we laugh. And by the way, yesterday or two days ago, we have a Muslim, remember? The guy who claimed, I don't know at that time when he said that to me, that word. But people, they make comment in the comment section saying that word mean that he have a disability of, let us say, he don't, uh, he have a disorder of reading. You, you know, and some Christian, they say he was not missing. He was not joking. He was telling you that he have that. You know, Christians are very naive people as usual. Nothing changed. The guy, he was reciting for me Quran for less, at least five minutes. He was reading in Arabic, which is a very complicated language. And he cannot give me the answer in English. And you will find the Christian saying, Christian Prince, this person was not really messing up with you. He is telling you he have a disorder. And he explained to me what that word means. This is how naive the Christian is. You know, the guy he called me, the guy he volunteered, the guy he throw, spoke to me already four times. And he read each time he called me. And now suddenly he have an illness, like what happened in 24 hours, you get sick and you cannot read no more. So I want to uh, I want to warn the Christians. If you are not vigilant. And a person with intelligence, you are in the wrong place. Go watch cartoon. Go watch cartoon. Those people, they are professional liars. They call you to play victim. So they can earn support from the full audience. I'm not making fun of anyone. I want an answer. I keep repeating the question. I, okay, you cannot read it. Can't you give me the answer? Read it with your eyes, your heart. Give me the answer. You, you can't talk, can't you? He can't, right? He's calling me names. He's making fun of me. But then you will find an idiot in the chat or in the, in the comment section. You know, he is taking his side somehow. And yet they are Christians. Because simply those people are very naive and they have a, they have a good heart, but your good heart is not connected to your brain, obviously. Now we go back to the here, chapter three, verse number one forty four. It says, Muhammad was only a messenger. There live other messengers before him. Any Muslim agree with this translation? This is what the verse is saying. <laughs> no dignity, no honesty, no loyalty to what they call the Word of God. I mean, those people, they claim and they shout and they scream that we are the one who preserve the Quran. If you preserve the Quran, why you are corrupting the Quran in your translation? Because this is a corruption. In Arabic, it says, قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهُ الرُّسُلْ Mean all messengers before him pass away. Anyone see the word pass away here? No. It says, there is live messenger before him. Well, is that a lot in us news now? I mean, don't we know? If you change the translator, just to show you how this religion works, it says the religion of the devil. Let us go to Biktal. Biktal, a Muslim, Muhammad Biktal, another terrorist. Muhammad is but, I don't know, I think you're missing the, word, the second T. In the in the word, but uh, you mean one T, but okay, a messenger, a messenger between two bracket like whom have passed away before him. Look in the previous translation, it says messengers lived before him. In the second translation, it says between two bracket and then have passed away before him. Still, this is false because what the verse saying. Which means all messengers before him, they pass away. All of them. It's coming from empty, you know, like that's it. Nobody is left. They lie. Let us change different translator. This is Big Tal. Let us see Hilali and Khan. You know, they try to duct tape the stupidity of Muhammad. It's a duct tape religion. And the market is out of duct tape. I mean, China cannot make no more. Okay, it says here, Muhammad S-A-W. Mm -hmm. 
This is the only region have SW and FAW and you know, like, okay. No more than a messenger. Oh, he is no more than a messenger. So why you call him a prophet? I mean, you see the stupidity here. In one hand, Muhammad, he claimed to be a prophet. In the other hand, he says he is just a messenger. So if he is just a messenger or he is a prophet and messenger at the same time, a messenger can be an angel coming to Mary and deliver a message. A prophet is the one who prophesy about the future. Muhammad is just a messenger. And it is the Muslim, by the way, who make a difference. For me, I don't see too much different because, uh, I mean, if the message is coming from God about something unseen, well, this is a prophecy. But anyway, here it says, between two brackets, look at the lies, look at the fabrication. You see, they are fixing the Quran. Many between two bracket messengers have passed away before him, not exist. It doesn't say nowhere many. It says all messengers they pass away before him. Not many. What many? Okay, if it's many, that's mean there's some they did not. I mean, do you see the, even the stupidity when they try to duct tape this cult? If you say many messengers before him pass away. That means there's still too many. They did not. <laughs> and they are, and this is mean they are still alive until now. I mean, this is the religion of stupidity, literally. So the Quran confirmed that all messengers before Jesus they pass away. And not only that, if you go to the video of Sheikh Omran. He said it clearly, the Quran says, Inni mutawafika, mutawafika, and he explained that it's mean I am going to take your life and I will take you up to me. So he have to die first. Here we go. If you read the translation of chapter 3, verse number 55, the same chapter, and remember when Allah said, and here you see the stupidity, you know, uh, uh, okay, how we can remember what Allah said? Who was there? Who witnessed it? Who heard it? Who saw it? I mean, do you see the stupidity? I remember when Allah said, when you say and remember, you know, that's mean Muhammad, he, he was there. Because I'm reminding him, in what? Where? Oh, Isa, I will take you and rise you to myself. Where it says I will take you and rise you to your son to myself. Where is the word that will kill you first? Where is the word that will make you die first? It's gone. You change the translator. This is Hilali and Khan. This is the game of translation. They are, you know, this is a religion. The translation of it is made by pervert, trying to cover their pervert prophet. Maududi, let us see Maududi, Mr. Maududi. I like Dudi. Dudi Biden. Okay, uh -huh. when Allah, he said, oh, Jesus, I will recall you and raise you, recall you. Uh, well, I heard that BMW are recalling some of their cars. Recall you? What does that mean? I mean, do you see the stupidity? Let us change the translator. Hmm. He, he, Allah is making a recall. Hello, Mayday, Mayday. Call Jesus, okay? We have to take him back here. Okay, you are near. Okay, there is a. We found there is a problem. Hmm. Recall, carry. Let us see this carry. Who is this carry? Where Where are you getting from? I don't know. Okay, I shall take you. I shall take your soul. Like what the heck? This guy is getting even better. Oh Jesus, I shall take your soul. Okay, hold on. How come all of this never appeared in the previous translation? Here we go. Now we find out that Allah will take his soul. What does that mean? It means he died. Guys, we did not change the Quran. We just flipped in the same stupid website. And then we find the Abdul or a Balbula coming to us to explain to us what happened to Jonah. Let us see this uh, Muhammad Fatima Sandra. With righteous uh, indication, Jesus reply, uh, let us go to the to the better and the, and the, and the cheese here. Jesus said, no sign. He does not refer to the Jews, to the blind, 
to the etc. Like all the sign, the, the miracles he did, he says no sign, no sign but one, the sign of the prophet Jonas. And then this female Balbula Muhammadan, she mentioned that well, you know, Jonah did not die. So how Jesus he compare himself to Jonah? Uh, and she posed this comment. Dead or alive, since Jonah was selfless sigh offering himself as a victorious sacrifice, there was a need for struggling for him. First of all, first of all, you are a potato, like you're a prophet. Nowhere Jonah he offered himself to be a sacrifice. When the people of the ship they find out that the storm happening, obviously because of somebody, he disobey God. And they question Jonah, if you go to Jonah chapter 1, they question Jonah, what you did? They ask him, wake up, man. Why you don't wake up and pray to your God to save us? And then the conversation lead them to know that this person, he did disobey God, and he was trying to escape the mission which God, he gave him to do. So if we go to Jonah, you can read Jonah 1 from verse number 1 and all the way to the end. I mean, it's a short chapter anyway. Uh, uh, you, you you know uh, uh, in verse number uh, uh, five and four, you will see Jonah. He go inside the ship in the sleep, as if nothing happening. Uh, even though the 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 storm is all over and storm is so strong, and then uh, the the sailors in the ship they say to themselves. Well, you know, uh, let us uh, make, uh, like, uh, I don't know what they call it in English. Uh, like, you know, you write some names and you choose the one, and the one who you pick up his name, he would do the thing, you know. So they say, let us do this, and uh, uh, th they did that, and the, the the name of Jonah came. So they came, this is why they came to Jonah, and they said to him, tell us what you did, and why this is happening, you know. They said to them, well, I am a hero. You know, I am from the from Israel, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I run away. You know, simply, I believe in God, the one who created everything, and uh, and then you know they discuss with him, and then when Jonah he said, you know, when he was talking to them in verse number eleven. They said to him, actually, let me open the verse. Hold on. I'm just recording from my memory. Uh, just to be sure. Give me a second. You will see now Jonah, he have no choice. He said, you know what? Okay, well, just, you know, then they throw me. You know, they were wondering what they would do. I mean, things is, is tense and they didn't know what to do. So when this woman, she says, uh, uh, he voluntarily, uh, even that, I mean, that's not a big deal, I mean, because Jesus, at the end of the day, he volunteered, you know, to uh, for the cross. He did not, uh, he said, nobody can take my soul, my, 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 you know, my soul from me. I lay down myself. Uh, let's open the verse. All right, let us see. <clears throat> and we can use any translation, it doesn't matter, you know. So here, this is Jonah, uh, chapter one. Let's wait on the screen. This is from verse number one, verse number two. You can open your Bible from your side and you can read. And then he will say, the Lord, he sent the great wind. So obviously the, the, the wind is happening by the order of the Lord. Uh, in the sea, where the ship, it's carrying uh, Jonah. And this is verse number four. Uh, and then the, the sailors, they were terrified. Uh, even they start throwing uh, goods from the ship. You know, they start throwing things from the ship so they can uh, uh, save the ship from the weight. Uh, and then you know those those sailors, they said to themselves, well, "Let us have a, 
uh, you know, let us make an, an I don't know what the game they call it. Uh, let us choose uh, the name, pick up a name by luck, let us say, and the one who his name is going to show up is going to be the reason for this, you know. And obviously, this is not three really D a game. Uh, otherwise, the Lord Himself, obviously, He made them pick up the name of Jonah. So when they pick up the name and they found that Jonah is the one that fell onto him, to him, this uh, this uh, this game. Uh, they said to him, tell us, uh, uh, you know, why this is happening? You know, what, who are you? You know, you are just a passenger. Who are you? What is your problem? What, uh, what you did? Uh, from which country you are? Who is your people? Uh, and then he said to them, well, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Uh, and then those men, they were really terrified. Obviously, the ship is flipping all over, I mean, almost coming down. And they said to him, uh, so, uh, like, what happened? Why this is happening? And what we will do? You know, they are trying uh, to find a solution. Obviously, you know, like, because of you, none of us belong to this. Uh, your God is the reason for this, you know. And then when uh, Jonah when he finds that they are throwing their stuff, they are throwing everything, and they are gathering around him, he have no other choice. He said, okay, what you will do? I mean, because either they will kill him, or they will, you know, he said, okay, throw me in the ocean. And this is why it says there it in, in verse number 12. So when this guy, he said, he said, sacrifice himself, you are being stupid. Uh, uh, because still, if you jump in the water, you are not dead. You know, you are not dead. You might be able to hold the piece, or obviously, already they are throwing uh, uh, their product in the water, and many things can be floating, and he can hold himself there, and maybe they are, you know, he might die, you might live. It's not still sacrifice yet, but he have no choice. And then uh, after they throw, uh, you know, and he actually he told them why, okay, throw me in the ocean because this is because of my sake, because of me, you know, I'm the reason for that. All right? For I know that is because, for my sake, this is a great thing happening. So I am the reason for it. Okay, throw me. But you will notice that Jonah, he was sleeping, trying to avoid any uh, confrontation with people, and, and he did not tell them anything about what he did, what he's running from. Uh, uh, so, and this is how, you know, Jonah, he end uh, in the water. As it says here in verse number 15. So they took up Jonah and they cast him forth in the sea. And here you ask yourself, when somebody says volunteer, why you need to cast him? He would jump. You know, I mean, people they are really weird. They have a little brain, or they, you know, if you have an agenda, you you, you claim you do not know how to read. If I'm a person voluntarily, uh, I wanna go out of the ship, I will jump. There's no need to cast me. You cast a person because obviously he have a lot of hesitation to do it himself or he don't want to do it. Maybe he said it, but he don't want it to happen. He would just say it, maybe, okay, uh, throw me. But maybe he never thought they would do it. So uh, otherwise they will not need to cast him. He will go to the top of the ship, walking his feet, and he will jump from the top, from the edge of the ship. It's very easy, you know? The ship uh, is not, uh, the fence of the ship is not 10 kilometers high. Uh, to the point he needs somebody to cast him from it. So people, they are silly and they say stupid things in order to prove a point. And then, if we go back to the uh, to this Balbula, focus with me, guys, in the topic, because I see people in the chat, I look from time to time, and I see people in the chat, they have no idea what we are talking about, and they are asking questions. Look, this guy is asking about Khadija. What this topic we are talking now about have, have to do with Khadija? It's mean your brain is not with us? And you don't deserve actually to be here. Be mature adult, we have a topic. So here it says, and she make it in big, take me up and cast me. We, we, we know we prove that you are a stupid because if, uh, 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 if he want to jump, he will jump. There's no need to, you know, he said, throw me, throw me out. Okay, throw me out. But obviously he don't want to do it because there is no need to throw him. No, when I say throw me out, 
Well, I need, why do you want to throw me out? I throw myself. Was Jonah a person who cannot walk? Was he a person disabled? He cannot even stand up? That is, can be possible if he is one of those. He cannot walk, he cannot stand up, he is in disability, and that's it. Then, okay, cast me, because simply I cannot do it myself. Uh, and then he or she said, the question is now serious, that when the shipmaster and the crew threw him overboard, was Jonah dead or alive? Any Christian child who has attended Sunday school will give you immediate answer, he was alive. Well, you idiot, well, if they cast him, they cast him out of the ship, he was alive. Actually here, uh, you see, I just mentioned that Jonah, in order for them to cast him, why they are casting him? Either he is disabled, he cannot walk, or maybe he's dead. <laughs> But I don't think he was dead, you know, that's what the verse is saying. But we can play the game, the Muslim they play, right? But because simply, he, he, did, he did not need to cast me. Okay, I will throw myself. You know, if he's, he's doing it voluntarily, why you need to cast a person? Why need to push him? If a person want to throw himself from the cliff, why need to push him? He will throw himself, he's doing voluntarily, as you said. But you are dumb. But about, so when, uh, uh, when Jonah... Uh, throw overboard, he was dead or alive, well, he was alive, but what did that mean have to do with the topic? You are silly stupid. If you go, let us open Jonah chapter 2. Because the story continue there. Uh, potatoes. In Jonah chapter 2, we will find Actually, we missed the part in Jonah uh, uh, chapter 1, uh, here at the end, where it says we did not read this part. So the Lord, he prepared a great fish, a whale, and they swallowed Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Now, the argument of those potatoes, they say to you that Jonah, he did not die. Let us see if this is true or not. We go to Jonah chapter 2. Jonah, he prayed to the Lord, out of the fish, Billy, obviously at this moment he is alive. And he said, I cried by reason of mine, affliction to the Lord, and he heard me, cut off the belly of, uh, uh, of the hell, carried, and I, though hardest my voice. You know, uh, uh, King James Version for me, it's hard to read, it's a very heavy duty English. Uh, here, first of all, you will see the belly, uh, the belly of... Uh, of the hell, you know, the belly of the fish presenting the belly of hell. And hell is death. For uh, the, the Bible, many times, there's tons of verses in the Old Testament and the New Testament. When you speak about if somebody is, uh, send you to hell, it doesn't mean really hell, uh, the eternity hell. It is death, you know, like this is, this is, the, uh, this is the other word where, you know, uh, if the person is, uh, uh, is bad, he will go to hell. And obviously, Jonah here, he confessed that he was bad. For he disobeyed God. So where he will go? He will go to heaven. He will go to hell. And obviously this is what's happening as a punishment for him for what he did. And then, uh, for thou had cast me into the deep. And here you see the stupid woman who made the comment. She said that he did voluntarily jump in the water. Here it says, for thou had cast me into the deep. <laughs> So do you see, guys, how little reading can can get those people busted? Just little reading, it will show you how stupid they are in their comment section. All right. So who is really the one who cast Jonah? The previous verse says the sailors, right? But Jonah he understand that all of this happening for the Lord he wanted to happen. So who is the one? Uh, You mean what? I don't know, some people making comment. Okay, some people, they are uh, giving a better translation. No problem, you see, it doesn't matter really. Uh, uh, same, same, uh, same. Uh, Sheol or Hados mean a grave. Yeah, actually, depending on the translation, it's not, no problem. We are going there, just wait, you know, have, have, have patience. 
uh, for sure, if you are a person who read the, the original language, and uh, let us say this is our weakness here, you know, if I am a person who speak Hebrew, I will for sure I would do better. But if you ask the, the, the Jews themselves, they agree that Jonah, he was dead in the, inside the fish. Uh, but even if he is not, I mean, we will see how that will not make a difference anyway. But if we go and read more, uh, like here, uh, uh, the belly of the hell, of hell, uh, if we, uh, you know, if you are a person who study uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament, you know how and what that word mean. So, why a person he is in the belly of hell if he is alive? Or he will be alive. You know, you don't go to hell until it is after life. Hell and heaven is something will happen after life only. It's not before. So even we use this translation, still this word can work very fine. All right? Uh, and I know like some people, they will say, uh, no, there's a better, better translation. It's okay, no problem, as you see. You don't go to hell or to heaven. And all of us, we agree on that. Until you die. You don't. Now, for sure, there is exception, like Jesus now is uh, in heaven. And uh, even when Jesus, he went down in hell, but Jesus did not go to hell. This is death. You know, like when Jesus died, he entered into hell. But that hell is what? is death, is not hell, you know, like hell where people go to, to be punished. But all of us, we knew that a person, when you mention hell, we mention heaven, that must happen after death, not before. Otherwise, before death, what hell? You know, I'm not entering hell anywhere. If a person, he go to jail, he is not in hell. If a person, he uh, suffering from illness, he is not in hell. If somebody is... Uh, he loses his feet, he loses his hands, he is blind, he did not enter hell. So when you enter hell, you enter hell after death. Uh, so here actually it's a clear sign, it says that Jonah obviously, he, he speak. And you know, we need to remember this. Uh, the story here is reporting, or there is a reporter of the story, right? So the story, as it's taught by Jonah, what Jonah, what happened, what he experienced. But here we see uh, that there is, there is a person is reporting the story. So you need to understand that, that there is a person from his uh, point of view as a narrator, he is reporting what happened to Jonah and what Jonah said. Then we continue. And if you don't like this translation, you can change. I mean, it doesn't matter really for me. We can use, uh, let us see, there's a Jewish, uh, there is a Jewish translation, I believe, here in this website. Uh, Orthodox Jews. I don't know where we we'll find it. Let us see. Orthodox Jews. I'm not sure where it is. I think there is one here. Uh, let me hold on. Let me find. Because I remember once I saw Orthodox Jews. Okay, let us see. Oh. I know, I, I don't find it. I believe, I remember I saw it once. Maybe they put it in their other languages. Let us see. Because it's mixed with Hebrew. Oh, let us see here. And they're all. <clears throat> Um, all right, it looked like they put it in the, uh, the other languages. All right. <clears throat> or we can use the Aramaic translation. But anyway, if we go... We will find in chapter 2, let us go back to the screen, give me a second. Uh, 
All right. Uh, you will see here Jonah is speaking about what's happening to him, describing exactly what's happening to him. So if you go to verse number five, uh, in verse four, you know, he knew, he admit that he was cast into the deep uh, in the middle of the sea. And, uh, you know, all of this because simply he was a sinner because he did something wrong. And then I said, I am cast off this of, of this site, which means I am cast off his, of your mercy. Uh, and he is giving the reasoning for what's happening to him, why it's happening. And in the same time, he is making a promise that I'm going to do what you want me to do. I did wrong, but I admit, I admit I did wrong. But at the same time, I promise I will look at your holy uh, temple again. I will look at your holy, holy teaching to me, your holy orders. And then here it says, and this is the, the Jewish uh, you know, translation here. It's not a translation, really. They are mixing Hebrew with some uh, English. Uh, maybe this is why the English is better. You know, I mean, you have to know some Hebrew here. Uh, but then you will see that the water... Uh, composed me and uh, uh, and it's covered me it's totally covered me let us use different translation here because maybe this word maybe is not familiar for many of you let me see What nefesh mean? Uh, let us see. Uh, read here carefully. I just search in Google. You know, this is a, you know, a, a pure Hebrew. So. The water is in my throat. It's cover. It's cover me. It's closed around me, and now it is in my throat. So Jonah is drowning. Jonah is drowning. And where he is, he is in the depth, in the depth of the water, not in the top of the water. You know, he is inside the belly, yes, but he is in the depth of the water because it's still, you know, the if you if you study the the whale. The whale is not not like a fish; it's a mammal, and they have a different system. You know, they have a, their stomach is different. Uh, uh, so it's possible for a person actually uh, to survive for some time, but for sure not for long. You know, because uh, it depends how much water he put in in his in his uh, stomach, and uh, how much food he dump over you. I don't know if you watch any documentary about the whale you will see what I'm talking about but obviously he is now in the depth and the water is in his throat and the water is all around him if you don't like this translation if you are Abdul you are not satisfied I heard once Zach and Naik, he like ESV you know he like he say ESV is the is the best translation you know Zuzu he knew best uh, as long as this is a translation that Muhammad and they like more, uh, we can go there just to make them happy. Customers come first. Where is the SEV? SEV or ARV? Yeah, SEV. Here we go. This is ESV. 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 All right. And here you will see again. We go. The deep surrounded me. The water closed over closed in over me to take my life. He is dying. The moment. That's it. He is describing that it's over. He is dying now. And not only that, there's things going around his neck and his head. Whatever the whale he swallow 
is warbing around him, around his head. At the roots of the mountains, I went deep to the land, whose bare clothes upon me favor. So you brought up my life from the bed. So he gave him what? He gave him life again. So if this person is not dead, I mean, the verse is so clear. You brought up my life. If I don't, if I have, if I'm not dead yet, it, well, he did not give me the life. He just saved me from dying. But you brought up my life. And again, you can do the game of translation. If you don't like this translation, you can change it. But you will see all they will end in the same way. So here you see the hypocrisy of the Muhammad. And when they say, well, Jesus, you know, if Jesus, he said, this is the sign of Jonah, uh, then he should be dead in the, in the, uh, in the grave, uh, same as Jonah did in the, uh, in the sea. Uh, but Jonah did not die. And here I, I find very a very stupid argument, because even if Jonah never died, you know, Jesus, he said, you can destroy this temple and I will build it in three days. You can destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. So the temple will be destroyed and that is life. Because when you crucify somebody, well, still his hands is there, his head is there. No. I mean, you did not cut him pieces. Still there is head, there is hands, there is all his body. So what is destroyed? The life. So you can destroy this temple, I can rebuild it in three days. And then the story of Jonah, being inside the deep, is what Jesus is talking about, for three days. Remember here, that when a stupid Abdul, he come to us and say, well, Jesus, obviously that means he did not die, if this is the sign. Well, Jesus was take, taken from the cross, the cross to a tomb, not to a hospital. And people don't take somebody to the tomb unless he is dead already. So here you see the ignorant and the, and the games they play a game. Uh, and this is Sandra. Hey, Sandra, do you like to call me so we can love together? Hey, Sandra, do you like to call me? Uh, this is the Sandra, you know, the, the, the funny lady. It might be a guy, by the way, because they use, uh, you know, fake names so they can add ladies to their names and talk to them. Uh, as you see here, it says, and you brought up my life. You gave me life. You gave me life. Well, if he is not dead, why he is giving him life? How that work? You know? Uh, and you know, like three days, three nights, you are inside a belly of a whale. And what is inside the belly? Anyone can tell me, guys? What is inside the belly? It's not only the water there is going to kill you. It is the acid in the belly. Because remember, this is where the whale, he digest, he destroyed whatever he swallow. Correct? So let us say, this is not a swimming pool. This is not a jacuzzi. And around you, there's a candles. There's three days, three nights. And the acid is digesting you. And imagine this is a wheel. This is not a belly of a human. You know? So if you could not, if you survive from the water, well, you will not survive the acid. You will not survive the things which became like a, like a jelly, you know, like because this is what happened to the food. You know, when you when you throw up, you throw up, you know, like this disgusting stuff, because simply the 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 uh, the stomach is digesting and make it hollow and then you know like became liquid totally liquid and then the body will suck it and take it as a as a as energy so when when a fool a foolish person he come to us and he say well jonah obviously was alive that is very stupid of you because number one it's impossible it's impossible if you don't die by the water you would die by the acid Number two, it was not for two hours or three hours. This is three days, three nights. Three days, three nights. How long a human being can survive 
putting him inside a, a, a pool of acid. How long before he will be dead? Acid. You know, if your acid, if your stomach come back to your throat, you will know what will happen. Extremely harmful. Correct? When, you, when people, they say they have a heart burn, burn you know? Uh, what is the heart burn? It's not your heart is burning, but your acid is going up to your throat. And that is extremely hard. Extremely, extremely, it will burn you. You are literally burned. So imagine if all around you is acid. <laughs> so, I mean, their argument is very silly and very stupid. But look what happened. God is good. God is good. And God don't leave himself without witnesses. Uh, and this is why we find now the Muslims, they agree that, you know what? Jesus, he was killed in the cross. He died in the cross. And whoever say no, he is lying to himself. This is why Sheikh Osman, Sheikh Omran, he says, stop your nonsense. Stop what? Your nonsense. Look what Sheikh Omran, he said. A moment of truth between him and the Muslim. And by the way, the Muslim, they say things when they are behind their doors. They don't say to us when they are in our doors. My friend, somebody want to call me. Somebody want to call me. I got it. I got it. Take it easy. My Skype is not open yet. When I say my Skype is open, people can call me. And only Muslim can call me. Very simple. No need for this drama. Whoever want to call me, he can call me. Why, you, why even you need to tell me this guy want to call you? I mean, do you see like my Skype is the, the same as the heaven of Allah? He have a guard. And they ask who is behind the door, who is with you? What's wrong with you people? Soon I will open Skype and the Muslim who like to call me, you know, all what he need to do, he texts me and I will call him. Sometimes we stay for 10 hours waiting for a Muslim to call. So look what this Abdul, he said to the Muhammadan. And this is what they say behind doors, remember. Yeah. We killed him. The Messiah, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, we killed him. In fact, if you and I were dead, we would also come to the conclusion that he died. And you will hear him say... So if we, if me and you, we were there, we will come to the conclusion that he died. That's what he said. Now, if me and you were there in the belly of the whale for three days, three nights inside the acid, obviously acid for those Abduls are shampoo and doesn't hurt. <laughs> and even when Jonah, he say, you gave me back my life, still he did not say that he died. Well, but this is Jonah talking, right? Hmm? Uh, you are trying to insult Sandra and go, Sandra, you will not find any husband here. You are very upset. Just get lost. Your maggot God. The one who have a maggot God is you, God. Have you ever heard of a God? He don't have a stomach and he don't have an ass, but he yet he sat on the chair. How he sat. He must be a maggot. There's no ass, there's no shape, he's just an insect, a maggot god, a very angry female. Go and get a husband, go. You relax, you know. Uh, anyway, let us open our Skype. She's upset because we know, we show everybody how silly she is. And you know, by the way, those people don't even read. They copy-paste articles. They did not even open the chapter to read. Let us open our Skype. If you are a Muslim, please just text me. Don't You cannot call me. I have only people who they are in my list. They can call me. Or if I spoke to you before uh, or text you, then you will be able to call me. Uh, 
Okay, we have a Mohammedan here. Let us see. Give me a second. <coughs> we are calling this guy. He called himself Sheikh. <laughs> Well, it says he is not online, I don't know. So he texts me and he's not online. I want to show you an example. I don't like to show a message of people, but I want to show you an example of mental illness. People who they, uh, you know, they, they chase me. Uh, this is a female. Uh, she is from Indonesia. She have like 3000 names. I block one, she come with the second one. I block the second one, she come with the third one. She called herself Nightmare. I don't know what kind of a stupidity human being he have. I, I don't know what, what to make a comment, but she keep making names after names after names. She, she went even to, to Patreon, she made a donation, I blocked her there. I mean, I don't know what to say with those stupid people. What's wrong with you? You don't have dignity, you don't have... Uh... Go find a man in a website, you idiot. Stupid people. You ha are you a Muslim? The one who says to me, can I call you? If you are a Muslim, you can. If you, if you are not, no. Do we have any Muslim? Any Mohammedan? I mean, even she called herself Nightmare. I mean, who is going to talk to you and you call yourself Nightmare? Hey guys, who, who, who wanna date Nightmare? Her name is Nightmare. Have fun. What's wrong with people? Obsession, madness, stupidity. Go offer yourself to the Prophet Muhammad. He will take you. This guy, he take anything. Do we have any Mohammedan? What, what, what is the Mohammedan who wanna text me? Obviously he's not a Mohammedan, right? Huh. Let us see this guy here. <coughs> We're trying to call another Mohammedan. If you are a Mohammedan and you like to join us, please feel free. And we will be happy to answer you. All right. The second Mohammedan we call, he did not answer. I am about to convert unless you can stop me. Uh, this person, he says he's about to convert to Islam unless I stop him. No, I don't care to stop you, go convert. You are stupid. Anyone who says such a statement for me, it's uh, obviously you are seeking attention. You are not a, truth, a truthful person. And obviously you are a Muslim. I am going to convert unless you stop me. You remind me of Muhammad when he decided to throw himself from the top of the mountain. And then he was waiting for Jibreel to hold him from his panty and say, Muhammad Khabibi, don't, don't, don't throw yourself. Okay, Khabibi, you are truly, truly, you are a messenger of Allah. Go throw yourself. Dummy people. As I care. You want to go to hell, go to hell. And obviously you're already a Muslim. You're a Muslim. You're born as a Muslim. How in the world anyone want to accept a religion, promise you an endless penis? I mean, you must be stupid, you must be an, a penis. You end as a penis because your penis is way bigger than you. When there is a God, he promised me endless penis. That's mean you are not even one to a million percent as a person compared to your penis. So you want to say to me, I'm thinking to convert, convert, you know, stupid idiot. Yeah, okay, no problem, my friend, you are born into no religion, stay wherever you are, go convert to Islam. I have no, I have no uh, interest in such a silly conversation. 
people who convert to such a religion, they have mental issue, and I can prove it. Endless penis. So how long, how tall you are, and how tall is your penis? Your penis is endless. You are not endless. So all of you, you become a penis. So, you know, I'm thinking to convert to Islam. Okay, go and become a penis. Follow the penis God. The penis of God is good. You know, at least you can screw with him. But I don't know you will screw whom. The first one you will be screwing is yourself. People are stupid, you know. I mean, what kind of a donkey will believe in such a stupid... Even donkeys will not accept it. Bring a donkey, tell him, listen, if you believe in me, I will give you a lot of female donkeys, okay? The donkey will look at you like, what? What the heck? Well, what, what, what you just said? I mean, do you even have to have a brain? Even donkeys don't accept such a stupid religion. And 80,000 little boys. How many, how many? Brother and sister. Okay, Zachary Naik, are you there? How come Zachary Naik did not call until now? Usually this guy, he jumped from the middle of nowhere. Prince and Prince, I'm watching you and I'm waiting for the moment. And the moment just came. The moment just came. So can you tell us why you will get 80,000 little, ch little child in the heaven? Prince and Prince, in the heaven, you need people to make servant. Uh -huh. And what those servants will do there? Other example. Uh, you need laundry. Hey, Zachary Naik, you're a stupid fool. The Quran says that even your clothes will never be ruined, they will never be even wrinkled. And they will never get dirty, and you will never change them. So what do you mean laundry? Okay, Christian Prince, forget about laundry. They will make sense with it. You stupid Zachary Naik. Isn't it your prophet, he says, whatever you wish, you make a wish right away, the password. You see a bird in the sky, right away will be in your dish. So what do you mean, servant? Make sandwich for you. Okay, Christian Prince. They will serve you wine. They will serve you wine. 80,000 little boy to serve you wine. 80,000 to serve you wine. Like, what the heck? This is religion. Christian Prince, I'm thinking to convert to Islam. Islam is very convincing. They have one God who make my penis very endless, very big, and size that does, does, does make sense. You know, all of us, we like size. You know, don't you like to have a big woman? Huh? Big TV? Huh? Big meat? And don't you like to have a big land? Here we go, your penis will be big. And how many servants you will have? 80,000? That's deep. Isn't it obvious that this guy is making fun of you, you idiots? Stupidity is amazing. Look at this hadith here. They ask Muhammad, what is the lowest reward in heaven. You see, many people, they keep saying to you that the reward is 72 versions, right? This is false. This is for the very, 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 very bad Muslim, the one who don't pray. You understand? The lowest, the lowest, the last one will enter from the door of the heaven is the last and the, the last and the list. So here, the least of the people of paradise, the least, the least, okay, what they will get? Brother and sister, this one will get 80,000 little boy and 22 wives. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Do we have any Abdul? He is proud about his cult. Anyone? Who is a Muhammad? And he can call us. You see the title of the video today? Is Muhammad is true a prophet or not? Who can prove it to us? Without a drama. If you want to call me to complain, don't call me. I will hang up on you. I'm not a customer service. A person saying to me, Hello, CP. I am an ex Muslim agnostic. I have a question that the pastor was not able to answer me. I think this is the same person. He just changed his name. Yeah, good to try. If you are a Muslim, text me.
and I will call you. Text me just to call you, not to talk to me. I don't want to text back. Anyone? Any Abdul? Remember, if you call me, you will go to heaven. You will get the 70, 80,000 servant boys. All of them are boys. The Quran described them, those boys, uh, as they are very sexy. And they are white, very white, like pearls. Chapter 52, verse number 24. Uh, let us see this guy. We'll give him a chance. Maybe he is being honest. We will see. Let us call him. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, my friend. So you are an ex-Muslim, you said? Yes, for about six years. So what do you think about Muhammad? I think he is uh, evil and wicked. All right. So what What uh, you said, do you have a question? Yes. All right. What is the question? Go ahead. It's about uh, Samuel 1, mm -hmm. chapter 15. Okay. And what about it? So it says there that... Um, uh, one second. I need to get my Bible. It basically says that God commands them, uh, I think commands David, to kill the people of Amalekite. And? And he, he has to kill the man, woman, child, and infant. And? And I feel this is similar to how Muhammad used to go and uh, check the boys for, you know, hair for puberty and then kill them too. So mm. I thought it was... Um, well, first of all, you know... Uh... When the Jews, they go in war, they go in war for a reason. Those people, the people of the Amlak, they inhaliate the, I mean, I don't know if I'm using the correct word in English. They almost extinguish the Jews. They killed a lot of them and they killed their women, their children, and they take them as slaves. Even they took their, their, their holy, uh, 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 let us say, sacrament. So the Jews, when God, he ordered them, the, you know, and we, or everybody knows that the Jews believe in the law, which is, is eye for an eye. And this is war. This is not two people fighting the neighbors, you know. You kill my son, I kill your son. No. The one who killed, he will be killed. But this is a war. And the Jews almost are extinct. And those people, they are doing with them all kind of evil. From killing their children, to taking their land, to taking their temples and to rape their women. So mm -hmm. the Jews, they've been given an order that you are required in order to survive. Otherwise, they will, they will keep doing this. And their children after them, they will come and kill you. Because the infant today is going to be a man tomorrow and he will go in war the same as happened before. And it will never stop. So either they finish you or you finish them, so the war will finish. And then the, the Jews, they did not even do what uh, God, he ordered them. And then the war never finished because they disobey. So the war continue and the killing continue and it's forever. And now I will, child, I will give you an example. Child, yeah. My friend, there's nothing is called a child to be killed or not. If God, he said, God, he said, we know we are not the Jews, the Muslims, who they are hypocrites, we deny things. Who is the one who give the life to the child? God. Okay. God, he says, I take his life. Who are you and me to question? So God who created us, if God, he says, Christian Prince, I'm taking your life. Can I stop him? Can I say to him, no? Can no. God anyway, without the Jews or with the Jews, cause them all of them to die? He can. But God, when he ordered the Jews to do the command, he was giving them another test to show, to show them how much they are forsaking him. They don't listen. They are potatoes. They are CP, Our friend, the children... your, your logic doesn't know. You see, this is not about Muhammad. Muhammad, he was attacking to rape women, to take money, to take Jews, 
not because those people are attacking him. Who, who did the Christian attack Muhammad? No. Did the Christian make a threat to Muhammad convert or else? No. Did the Christian say, if you don't convert, we, we will come to the Kaaba and take the Kaaba? No. So Muhammad was attacking for no reason. Those people, they are being attacked already. And actually, this is a verse in the Quran, in chapter number two. It's mentioned that how uh, uh, Samuel, uh, uh, because the Jews, they refused to fight for Allah, Allah, he cursed them. So Muhammad trying to copy the Jews' story, and he always claimed it to his God. So uh, I don't need to argue with you about it. It's up to you to accept or not to accept. And I don't care really if you accept or not. I'm just telling you what it is. But CB, you, you gave a good reason for the children because, you know, maybe the children will grow up and remember what... Not maybe, they will grow up. I mean, what is that maybe? I mean, have yeah, you ever heard okay. of a child will not grow up? So uh, if I, I, mean, if I kill my friend, if I kill your father, okay, and you were an infant, your mother, she will tell you, right? Who killed your father? What you will do? Yeah, I will kill you, yeah. Okay, so this is English. They have war for a long time. It's not just a, year, a month or two. And the one is victorious is the the one who is attacking is the the Amlites. It's not it's not the Jews. The one who is taking over, you know. So there's no solution for this. And those okay. people they hate them. They hate them for a very simple reason because they are worshiping Yahweh. Because they are worshiping God, they don't approve. So we want to kill them all. That's what those people believe. So if you say to one side. Oh, you don't kill them. And the other one, they don't have God to say to them not to kill them. They are pure evil. Then you are making your people are exposed to death and they will be, you know, destroyed. So what, what God, he said to them, well, they are evil. They don't deserve my protection. And they are killing you because of my name. Go kill them. And then the Jews, they did not. If you read actually the whole chapter, you will find that they refused. They did not do it. <laughs> they did not. Mm -hmm. And the war continued. So my friend, God, he do things for a, for a wise reason. And at the end of the day, you know, we as a Christian, we are not the same as the hypocrite Muslims who deny things. You say, oh, he did not. You know, in Islam, we don't accept killing children. No, in Islam, they accept children. We have the story of Al-Khadr. We have the story where the Muslims came to Muhammad and they said to him, well, you know, when we attack the, you know, uh, the, our enemies, we are killing their children. Is that okay? He said, yeah, they are from them. You know, there are Rehom. I don't know if you speak Arabic. Yeah. Uh, so, the Muslim, they deny it because they are hypocrite. We do not deny it. For not, we are not. You know, this is what the Bible says. Okay. And we believe in it. And we believe it's a good reason. But for you, from your side, you might agree, you don't agree, this is your business. We don't compromise with a disbeliever because he think it is not right. Okay, okay, you know? I understand. Yeah, so uh, this is how it is. Those people, they are in the stage of surviving. This is not about two neighbors living together and the guy, he just uh, throw a football in your yard and you're going to kill the neighbors, all of them, because they put a, a football in your, uh, you no, know, or they broke your window, mm -hmm. you know? Those people are taking the women, taking the, the children, taking everything. And yeah. the end of this nation is going, to, is going to be based on the decision to obey God or not to obey. So God is telling them about the future. If you don't do this, this is what will continue. They refuse to obey God. And the war until now continue. Look, go right now and watch the news about Jerusalem. Those Jews, they never obey God and they will never obey God. And they will be still in war forever because they still don't obey God. When they took Jerusalem, the Jews, they accept that the one who occupied their city to stay there. And now they are paying the price. They are occupier. This is your land. You know, mm -hmm. when Muhammad, he cleansed the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula, no Muslim complain. No Muslim complain. There's, there is a zero Christian, zero Jew in Saudi Arabia. Zero. What happened? Yeah. It's a cleanse, cleansing. It's a genocide. The Jews, they go in war. They win the war. God gave them their land back. Okay, don't kill those people. Be civil. Send them back where they came from. So you can live in your country in peace. But they never change. 
nothing will change on them. And the Jews today, they are far away from God. And if they continue this way, God will take their land from them and give it to their enemies. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when the, the Bible speak about that, you know, uh, God will unleash the evil on you. What, what does that mean? It's like, you know, you say, you know, when God, he created you, he created you with immune system, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you disobey God and still start sleeping around. And then you get what? You get AIDS, correct? Yes. Okay. And what AIDS will do? Attack Im uh, the immune system. We'll, we'll destroy it, correct? We'll destroy it. You will have zero by time. You will have zero immune system. So who is the one who killed you? God or yourself? Yourself. Yourself. And actually it's God too. Because God, he created all those diseases too. So those who disobey, those who they are false, those who they are doing their 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 own uh, delay for their desire, they will end where they belong. Yeah. You you decide to destroy your immune system. You destroy the decide to be vulnerable for the evil. So God will not protect you no more. And that will happen to the Jews too. As long as they are with God, the Bible says, my people have been destroyed because of their ignorance. And what is their ignorance? They start worshiping idols. They start, you know, uh, changing their their uh, their belief, their the way they the 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 way they dress, the way they live, their, everything. They they change everything just to be hypocrite to the neighbors who they are pagans. They don't worship the true God. So, in the matter of belief, if a believer, if you speak to a believer, he will not compromise. This is how you know who is a believer who is not. Muslims are not believers. Muslims are a bunch of liars. The second you show them something, you think it's negative, they deny it, but it's there. Why they yeah. deny it? Because they feel ashamed of it. We as a Christian, we have no shame. We see in the Bible, we have no shame to see there. We see that this is this is this is this is what the right thing to do. We don't see God; He's doing shameful things. For them, they see their God doing shameful things. That's why they try to compromise and they try to cover up inside their houses. They say something. Outside their houses, in the front of us, and atheists, etc., they say something else. All mm -hmm. of the Muslims, if you ask them, they say to you, Islam give you, they say, Islam says there's no compulsion in religion. But we know that Muhammad says the one who changed religion, kill him. Yeah. And we know that all Islamic countries, they kill the one who leaves Islam. So what, what do you mean? Which one is the true? So they say something, they do something else. But the truth is, Muhammad, he killed anyone who leaves his religion. If you ask a Jew, is it true that the, the Old Testament says if somebody leave, the belief, you kill him? He will say yes. You ask a Muslim, he will say no. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see, they deny it because they are not true believers. They are potatoes. And that's why yeah. we love at Islam. Muhammad created a, a, a form of hypocrisy. It's called Islam. And even himself, he come with the hypocrisy rules. It's called taqiyya. So if I talk to you, and what I say to you is going to expose your belief and make it look bad, you are allowed to protect yourself, to protect your belief, to deny it. When uh, mm -hmm. someone like David Wood, he debate with Mimi Hijab, David Wood, he says to uh, Mimi Hijab, your God have body part, Mimi Hijab. In two seconds, he destroyed the answer question. He said, who said so? Hypocrisy. Well, all of Islam says so, Muhammad says so, the Quran says so, the scholars say so. The answer is, who said so? And the Muslims, all of them, they are laughing. <laughs> we won the debate. <laughs> A bunch of potatoes, coward, liars, they deny the nature of their God, they deny even their God to make a point on a stage. It's a, it's a comedy show, my friend, and we are here to mm. expose it. Anything else, my friend? Um, I don't want to take too much of your time, so I think I will ask the questions to the pastor. Will I just answer you? I, I have other questions, but this is the only question that the pastor... So you are asking answer. questions about, about Christianity and Judaism. Is that, is that mean you are interested on them or just asking? No, because uh, I want to become Christian, but um, okay. you know, I feel there are some things blocking. Okay, so what, what is blocking you? Tell me, maybe I can help you. Um... Because you, you talked about how um, 
how the apostasy they will kill you in Islam and even in the Old Testament will say that. And mm -hmm. Jesus in the New Testament he said he came to complete the law. Exactly. Uh, not to to change it, but I don't understand why everything seems so different. No. Even the not, food nothing different. The food in the, no, nothing different. Yes, because the food in, in the they cannot eat it, the Jews, but then Jesus no. he made it lawful. Okay. See, first of all, let us talk about the apostasy. The apostasy for the Jews is a person he betrayed them because the Jews is not just a religion, they are people, they are ethnic. Do we agree? Yes. Okay. So all the neighbors, as you see, they are enemies. So now you go and you join the enemy camp. So the apostasy is not only just not to worship God, it's you are betraying them and joining their enemies who want to kill them. And even now in America, I don't know if you remember, there's a guy, his name is Al Wakili. He is an American citizen, but he is originally from Yemen. He joined Al Qaeda. What the American did to him? They killed him. Right? This is 2000, a few years ago. So, is that apostasy? You can worship whatever you want in America. You can worship your, yourself. You can worship Stone. You can worship a bikini. But he joined the enemy. He joined the enemy when I destroyed the country. So, the apostasy law in the Judaism, you need to understand that this is not about leaving religion only. This is about joining the enemy camp. People who had destroyed the Jews. Secondly, you said about Jesus, as an example, what is lawful for food, what is not lawful for food. Well, Jesus never says uh, anything against the Old Testament. What Jesus said, he, told, he, he showed the, the Jews that you became too much into rituals and you became foolish. For it's not what go inside the mouth make you dirty, what come from your mouth. So, you know, when they speak about the Sabbath, as an example, Jesus, they, they saw Jesus working in Sabbath, you know, doing miracles. So, or his disciples doing things. So Jesus, he said to them, Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. The Jews are very greedy people. They were, you know, they love money. And they forced themselves and their household and their servants to work seven days. If they can work actually eight days a week, they will, they will you know. They love money. So what God he said to them, he gave him a very conservative law about Saturday, the Sabbath. Why? Because he knew their greed. They knew how much they love money. Mm -hmm. So he had to enforce it on them. So when Moses, he gave them the law, it was because they are very, very in love with money. They are abusing their servants. The guy, he go to sleep and the servant working seven days a week. So mm -hmm. he put a very tough law on them, but the purpose is not the Sabbath. God don't care for your Sabbath. He don't care for your Saturday, Sunday, Monday. He care for what is right. So God, he said to them, you don't work in this day. All your household, all your servants, they stay home. That mm -hmm. is for the benefit of the man, was not for the benefit of God. Secondly, let us say eat pork. Uh, eating pork is forbidden in the Old Testament. There's many things, even camel, you know, uh, right. is forbidden. But there is a reason. There's a health reason. There's a health risk. And God, he don't care really if you eat pork or you eat beef or you eat shrimp. And food is food. But there's certain animals that are growing in the field and they are eating and they are coming with diseases. As an example, pigs in the old days Nothing changed actually now, but the difference is we don't walk, drive in the highway and we find dead bodies all over, right? Unless you are in a war zone. In the mm -hmm. old days, people, they, there is the, there's the pirate, there is the, uh, the gang, uh, there is the thieves in the road. They kill people, they take their, they, they rob them, they take their money, they throw them in the street or they throw them in the desert. The one who will come and eat them is the pigs. Mm. Or you leave the pigs by themselves. You come in the morning, you throw them somewhere, you come back after, etc. And then you gather them back, you take them to the town. But those pigs, there's nobody is watching them what they are eating. They can eat, mm -hmm. a, they eat a human. Pigs, they eat anything. Pigs, they eat anything. So yeah. uh, uh, this is what the reason. But if you think about it, it is not because that will make them unholy. That, but that because for the benefit of the health, not for the benefit of God. Otherwise, God is God. When you eat pigs, well, you don't eat pigs, what that would do to him? 
you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he come and he said to them, I came to complete, as you say, but he said to them too, that it's not what go inside your mouth, make you dirty. It's what come from your mouth. So Jesus is correcting them. You focus in what you eat, but your faith is coming from your mouth. You are hypocrite. Yeah. You are you. You take interest from people. You uh, uh, you know against God teaching. I mean, everything they do is against God teaching. But they focus only not to eat pork, like the Muslim today. Prostitution, mm -hmm. sex under the carpet, under the table. Uh, you know, uh, one night stand. Muta Muhammad he came with the muta. This is so Muhammad he forbid them from eating pork, but he come with the muta. So which one is more horrible? Renting a woman for a day or two just to sleep with her and give her money, or eating some pork? Yeah. It's you see, you see, always you need to ask yourself about the benefit and the damage. The benefit. So. If I eat pork, what much damage I'm doing to myself and to the society? And if I rape a woman, what much, uh, what much damage I'm going to do to society? So the Muslim, they focus on the silly stuff because Islam is a silly religion. Which one is more important? To not to let my daughter, she is six years old, take him to, from my house, sleeping with the man, he is 54 years old, or not to eat pork? For the That's Muslims, awesome. Yeah, for the Muslims, is not to eat pork. Your daughter, mm -hmm. she is six years old, marrying, it's okay. They don't see any problem with it. So what Islam did, flip everything upside down and made what is unjust, just, made for an occasion, call it marriage, muta marriage, and make what is dirty, halal, and what halal is dirty. Mm -hmm. In the same time, Muhammad, he said to them, in the beginning, he forbid them from eating the, the, the food of the Christians. Suddenly, Muhammad, he says, I made your, the, your, the food of the Christian lawful for you. Why is it lawful? If our food is, include pork, why is it lawful today? What happened? And then you will find the Muslim, hypocrite Muslim says to you, I can eat only halal food. But the Quran confirmed, you can eat the food of the Christians. Don't Muhammad knew what the Christians eat? Mm -hmm. Hypocrite, coward. Anyway, uh, it's up to you. You know, you think Christianity is good for you. You take it. You don't think it's not good. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Christ will not uh, will not gain anything, my friend. If you and me stay, if we become Christian or not, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's you who gain or who. It's you who lose. It's up to you. Anything else? Uh. Uh, one last question. I, I don't understand why Jesus is, is praying to the Father. Very simple. You know, if Jesus is praying to the Father and we don't believe in the Trinity, that would be a problem. Because then, uh, well, if we believe that uh, uh, our God is one person, then Jesus is talking to who? Uh, praying to himself? That one doesn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. But because we believe in the Trinity, what Jesus keeps saying, when he pray, he says, my father, right? So the son is speak to the father. That is what pray, pray in, in, you know, have many meaning. Uh, it can be uh, an act of worship. It can be an act of worship with request, you know. Uh, it can be an act of worship uh, uh, as a duty, like what the Muslim do. It's a ritual, you know. Mm -hmm. Or it can be when it's, when it's between the son and the father, as an example. Jesus said to the, uh, to the Father when he was on the cross, Forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. You can say this is a prayer. But as we understand, the Bible is a book, it's not just a verse. We knew that the Bible says it clearly that the Son and the Father, they are always in total agreement. As an example, when Jesus, uh, uh, they want to come to crucify him, Jesus, he knew what will happen tomorrow. This is before the crucifixion. Uh, mm -hmm. He's, you know, he spoke to the Father. He prayed to the Father. He can use that word. No problem for us. But then he said, "Let your let your will be done." So by the agreement of Jesus, let your will be done. So always the Son and the Father they are in agreement, and they have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So because we believe in the Trinity, that will not be a problem. But that will be a problem for the Muhammadan. So when Allah He says in the Quran that Allah He pray. Allah and his angels, they pray for Muhammad, not to Muhammad, as Mimi Hijabi said, 
Well, that's a problem. Because Allah, he prayed to whom? To the Father? No? No. <laughs> so, yeah. So if the Muslim, they have a father and they have a son, then that is not a problem because simply Allah speaking. But, uh, but here you will notice too, they have a problem because the one who is praying is the father, which is the authority. You see, Jesus himself, he said, you know, like the term father is an earthly term, right? We use it in this earth, father, father. When you say my father, we are talking about the one I came from, correct? Yes. Okay. So the Bible, when the Bible mentioned the word father, obviously the Bible is telling us too, that Jesus is born of the father. So it's obvious that the one who is the source of everything the son has is the father, correct? Yes. So it's very normal that the son, he requests things from the father. For everything he have is coming from who? From the father. Mm -hmm. That's why he called him father. That's why he called himself son. Son always mm -hmm. present that I am a person who simply, uh, I have an authority. And the authority is the authority of my father. So the authority I have, everything I have, is coming to me from my father. Who is the one who gave the authority for Jesus, the son, over the flesh of man? The father. So it's very normal for the son to speak to the father and even to ask him for things. So for us, this is not a problem. And you know, the Muslims, Islam is a hijacked religion. So when Islam hijacked the story of Mary, that Mary, she gave birth to Jesus. You know the story, right? That Mary, she, is, she was a virgin, correct? Yes. Okay. But this story does not make any sense in Islam because Mary is a virgin or not, what that will do? I mean, and who can prove that anyway? I can claim that my mother was a virgin when she gave birth to me. Your mother, she can claim the same. Mm -hmm. But after she gave birth, nobody can prove it because it's too late now, right? <laughs> so, uh, 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 but here you notice, Muhammad, he copied the story, he put it in his book, but he did not tell us what is the purpose. Why Jesus? Okay, all mankind, they are born from a mother and, and they have a father. Why only Jesus? The Muslim, they say to you, will the Quran answer you? The Quran says, the similarity of Jesus, the same as Adam. He said to him, be, and he was, but this is a stupid answer. Because Adam was not born, Adam was created from dust, and Jesus was not. You see that you see how silly the logic. I am comparing mm -hmm. between two people. They have they don't have the same origin. Adam never was born. Yeah. Jesus was born. So what the Quran to do, as Muhammad always do. He copies stories from, this, from, from other relief. He put them in his book and he have a hard time to explain them because he does not know what those stories mean. Mm -hmm. And then we find, if we study this verses, chapter three, verse number 59, where it says that the similarity of Jesus, same as Adam, he said to him, be and he was, then we study carefully, we'll find that Adam was created and took him a lot of time to Allah to finish him, according to the Quran. He first made the... Uh, uh, bring water and dirt and he mix it together and then he fashioned this mud he made mud and then he fashioned it in the shape of a man and then the last stage he breathed into the man and even after he breathed Adam still is not done yet so Adam he said to him finish me Allah before the sun set so then yeah. he asked the Muslims Allah he said be before he created Adam or after he created Adam <laughs> you know what I mean yeah, it doesn't make sense. If Allah he created Adam by B, well then why he made uh, fashion uh, mud by his hands? And why he made the mud? And then we, why he breathed? Just a B and that's it. Mm -hmm. So the question, did Allah say B to Adam before he was using the mud or after? If they say before, that's mean the rest of the story is a lie. If he say B and he was, that's mean he did not fashion anything. He did not make mud and he did not breathe. But the Quran confirmed in other places that he did fashion, he breathed after yeah. he finished the fashion, and then even it took time for Adam to receive his soul after Allah he breathed. So Quran is a stupid book and we laugh at it. And this is why the Muslims they deny what's written in the Quran. 
and they deny what their prophets say in order to escape. We as a Christians, we are people who they are. You know, we are true believers, and a true believer will never compromise and will never say things to sweet someone who don't believe. Like now you're calling me and you are mentioning things you think it's negative, but I did not compromise to answer you, did I? No. All right. Anything else, my friend? No, I think that's it. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. <clears throat> Those who compromise are the fake. Uh, we have a Muslim text to me saying Muhammad is a true prophet. Let us call him. Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend, you are a Muslim? Yes, I'm Muslim, and you would always spread lies about uh, everything to do with us, because, and you say Quran, Quran is fake, book is, uh, but your book is full of stupidity, too. Oh, okay. So, okay, let us, let us focus one by one. And you know what? I also, let us, my friend, let us focus one by one. Say, let us focus Jesus, one by one. Why Jesus don't know? Jesus don't even know the hour. Yeah, that's funny, my friend. This is really funny. So why why I'm shake saying, why shake I'm Imran? Wrong. Why shake Imran? He says that Jesus he knew the hour. Do you know? Do I care about who is this uh, Sheikh Imran? Okay. I don't listen. What about will the, but no Sheikh Uthman? Uh, Sheikh Imran. He says this is what the Quran is saying. That's not well, my problem. Lisa. He is the one who know the hour. The Quran says that. I just want to know what's going to happen when Allah casts you to the hellfire. Okay, let us see what will happen. Because First of all, do your God, Allah, know the hour? My God know the hour. He don't okay. have to tell you. Well, can you, can you read for me the chapter? Can you read for me? Can you read for me the chapter of the moon, verse number one? You have it on screen? Yeah, here Show we me. go. Mm. Hold on. I'll read for you. Mm. You're, you're just a monkey, man. You can insult me as much as you want, but you will not be able to answer. People will laugh. Read. Do your God, Allah, know the hour? I see uh, B and he was. No, yeah. no, no, you will see. It's chapter of the moon. You can search it in your phone or your computer. Chapter 54, verse number one. Let me. Hmm. I have to bring my own site because you put fake. Yeah, I put fake. Muslim websites are fake websites. I agree. What is the website you open? I can put it for you on screen. Now I see hour is draw near and moon is square. Uh huh. So what, what Allah he said? <clears throat> this he say when the hour is gonna come, the moon is gonna split. Mm, and if they see a sign they turn away and say an incessant magic they deny and follow their own desire and every mother has setting appropriate place. so uh, okay so so what 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 will happen here we have somebody he claimed to be god claiming that the sign the sign of the judgment day is what is the moon splitting is that correct Yes, but there are many other signs that the great... No problem, but here we go. Uh, my, my friend, you're, you're, you're uh, God here, you're God here. One by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. By so one. Many. Do, 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 you, do, you, do, you, do you speak Arabic? It says here, اقتربت الساعة اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر اقتربت is mean it's almost there, very near, you know? Almost there. So, and you're a prophet, he says, you, Shikwa Isa, Isa is almost coming down on you, almost coming here. Is that correct? So you're a prophet. He was speaking about that judgment day will happen in his lifetime, and the sign of the judgment day starting is the moon splitting. How you explain to us such a stupid thing? You know, a lot of people, the Christian, they always they, they try to say like, uh, actually, okay, Muhammad, he said uh, there is a boy, he gonna get old, and then. 
but already this didn't refute my friend it, like, uh, we'll have a topic please focus with me how your god he claimed that the sign of the judgment day is the split of the moon and nothing happened maybe that split not happened yet clearly not happened yet so the, the, right? moon, the so the moon is splitting did not happen yet not the one for the hour Oh, because, so, so, uh, the, so this one here, Muhammad, okay, so the one, so the one, okay, let us make it clear. The one in front of us, chapter 54, verse number one, this is about something will happen in the future, not something happened already in the time of Muhammad. I'm not sure. I don't know. Why? Read, it, read, it, read it and tell me, give me your answer. I want an answer. Go ahead. Well, it looked like it says the hour draw near, so maybe he thought uh, this to me, it looks like it's talking about current time, current mm -hmm. time. But we know that uh, this is not like one year, two years, three years, four years. You cannot decide like what is eternity, what is not eternity level. Quran and, and Muhammad, they don't have to tell how many years. It can be 500, 5,000 years. Mm. Uh, it's a small time to Allah, you understand? Okay. So, very, yeah, it's very... a small time for Allah. But as you see here, the moon is split already. As what? As a sign of judgment day. It's a warning. So if it's going to be 10,000 years from now, so what's the point of the sign? The point of the... Probably, maybe what it's trying to say is um, there will be some big cataclysm with the moon. Okay. In the time, in the judgment time. Uh, I will, I will help you more. I will help you more. So, I will help you more to understand what's happening. Do you see my screen now? I still see uh, uh, chapter five. Okay. Chapter, read with me. Read, read with me this hadith. I, I will show you many of them. You know. Let us see this one. Read this one for me. <clears throat> Can you read it? Which one you saw? If this young boy live, he may not grow very old till mm -hmm. he would see the last hour coming here. Mm -hmm. An asterisk. Okay. Okay. So, so why you show me this? He would not grow very old. Okay. So Muhammad, there is a group of people in front of him, and one of them is a young boy. He said to them, "This boy, he will not grow old before the hour, which means the judgment day will come." And where this hadith is? Uh, this is the Aif, this. this is the Aif hadith. Can you show me? Is it Daif? I don't even know if it's Daif. It's Daif, I think. What do you think? Do you think is this hadith is strong or Daif? I think it's maybe maybe it's Hassan. It's Hassan. Hadith. No. Yeah. Well, no. Maybe. This is a, this is Sahih actually. This is Sahih Muslim. So what we will do now? So when you say to me, I well, ask, has Anas I... ever reported incorrect thing before? Huh? Has An Anas ever reported incorrect thing before? Anas, he did he report any correct things before? Well, I don't think so because all, I believe all Muslims they never report anything is correct, including Muhammad. So don't ask me about how Muslims if they are true witnesses or not, because I believe all of them they lie to us about what their prophet do and what he said. But this is your problem, not my problem. This is Sahih Muslim, and the Hadith here is so clear that this young boy he will never grow old until the day of judgment will come. So let us say he will not become 40 years old because haram, haram, it can be even 30, 30 something, 35. So before he becomes 35, 40, judgment day will come. And why do you think uh, Rasulullah tell that? Because <clears throat> if you say and it's a lie, why he would lie? Well, because, he's, he a, would because, lie because he's a false prophet. So he just trying to scare everybody to, to follow his word? It don't make sense. Well, it does not make sense to make a prophecy. He do not know. You know, he says uh, by the time they will find out he will be dead anyway. 
this is the child for sure he will live way more than Muhammad you know I mean Muhammad at that time he's already in in, in his 60 almost so uh, and this child will never become before you come out, you know. And then the Muslims, they try to fix it. They say, oh, no, this is not about the hour. Uh, this is about uh, those people will die. It will die. It says the hour, a sir. And maybe they are correct because uh, he doesn't say like, okay, it's last hour for all it says, mankind. It says, it says, Hatta tukumusa. here we go. The Arabic is so clear. They try to fix it by their lies. You go and search right away where the word sa'a. The second you say the word sa'a, sa especially when you say a sa'a. Taqumu sa'a, taqum il qiyama. Sa'a is the hour. I mean, oh God. You need when you get more clear. Taqumu sa'a. Taqum coming from qiyama. And sa'a is the hour. Well, very simple. So when you, when your Muslim try to fix it, they make it a blind. So, so how you can explain that Jesus don't know the hour? You see, you see, you now you are trying to change topic. First of all, you know, uh, when a Muslim he answered a question, right away he tried to divert any topic about Muhammad. So, do you agree with me first now that Muhammad here obviously he do not know the hour and he's a liar, and his God is not a God? No, I just think this report is uh, is uh, not even it says Sahih doesn't mean it's what actually happened. Because I don't, I go by Quran. I don't care about. Well, I just showed you the Quran. It says the, and you said to me that the moon splitting will happen in the future, correct? Yeah, and there is no. Yeah, but no, you see, but you, but you Muslims, you, you Muslim, you have a stories in the Hadith about the moon split already, and even the Quran says it's in the past tense. It al al qamar. In al qamar, it's a past tense, and the moon split, not will split. The moon is a split. Do you see it? It's your translation. A split, I think maybe he's talk about eclipse. Okay, and, uh, so your prophet, you are saying to us now that your prophet, when he say split, he mean the eclipse. So how that is a sign of the hour? Eclipse happen every day. I mean, my uh, prophet predicts exactly who will die after him in the order. Our friend, this is after him. This is two hundred years. This is two hundred hadith written by Muslims, and already we know who died and who was, you know. Oh, can you show me that in the Quran? Even Muhammad, he says, I know nothing about the future. Jesus is the only one who knows. That's what the Quran says. You just try to twist. I'm not uh, twisting. This, this Quran. is this is this is, you this, know is what this is really what the, this is what the Quran. Trump this is what the Quran because, says, my friend. Does the Quran says that Muhammad he said? I know nothing. Does the Quran says what? I know nothing of the treasure of Allah. Does, does Muhammad says that? In the same time, the Quran says that Jesus, he knew the unseen. He can tell you even what you had in your houses. Oh, this is about seeing the unseen. Jesus was crazy man walking around. People, it, uh, and nobody witnessed his resurrection. Only some. Okay, so you are saying to me like now, Jesus. Okay, so you, and, uh, so you are followers. saying to hold on, hold there on. There is no written hold person. Okay, no okay. person wrote like or no reliable person. No, hmm. no, like Romans, nobody wrote like, okay, we, we saw, we put Jesus in crucifix, then three days later, uh, we saw him. It's only just some women, some uh, unbelievable, like his apostle, who are already hmm. following his crazy cult. And hmm. you call Islam a cult, but we okay. have much more evidence. Maybe, maybe, you know what, maybe Muhammad... Uh, okay, we will go with you. Listen, listen. You, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are jumping, uh, you are jumping from place to place. Let me show you how stupid what you just said. So you said nobody saw Jesus, right? In the cross, correct? Nobody reliable saw the Jesus. Okay. Uh, is, they saw is, him on the is, cross, but okay. they did is, not is, see is, him. Is Allah reliable, is Allah reliable for you? Is, is, Allah rea is Allah reliable for you? Allah is, of course, is reliable. Okay, so you, is, okay uh, that's mean you are a, you are a foolish man. You just insulted Allah because you said nobody saw there is reliable, and now that's mean whatever the Quran says it's a lie because the Quran says read me carefully chapter four verse one fifty seven. They crucified him not, which means for sure, but Allah made it appear to them, and the Jews they said we killed him. So how many people witness all the Jews, and what the Jews they say we killed him? Allah he confirmed. That what the Jews say is true, but Allah, he made it appear to them. But I said it's about 
Listen, reason. listen. You Talk say, about who? You say there's no witnesses. You say there's no somebody trustworthy. But the Quran says the opposite. In Quran, we don't believe that. Uh, we believe Jesus. Maybe they saw Simon. Maybe they saw. My friend, uh, uh, no uh, one answer, knows what answer the Quran. Do. Don't answer okay. the questions now. Answer the Quran. When the Quran says that you as a Muslim, you should believe that the one who was in the cross, he appeared to the With Jews Simon. to be killed. He appeared, he appeared to the Jews to be killed. You said Simon? Yeah, maybe it's Simon. Okay, Mr. Uh, the, 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 religion, the religion of maybe. When you say to me maybe, uh, uh, you, you, you follow the God, Mr. Maybe, or you follow God? I follow God. Okay. I follow Allah. Where Allah, he says to you that Allah, he replaced Jesus by someone else. Can you show me? No, I cannot show you. Okay, but so we know so that hold on, the hold on, Quran wait, wait, doesn't no, have to explain which, every but Just wait, just wait. Details. So you Muslims, you believe in fiction stories. So you Muslims, you say uh, God, he cloned someone, making look him look Jesus. Where you get the story from? Did your prophet say that? Many sheikh believe this. Many sheikh. Yeah, many sheikh because, because, because they are because, because they are potatoes and you are potato too. I because I'm asking God. you now. Look, look at this potato cult. I ask you where this story came from. You say many sheikh believe in that. So shouldn't the sheikh they follow their prophet? Shouldn't the sheikh they follow the Quran? So if the Quran never said so, why you must fabricate stories? There is not one single fabricate story. Okay, so you just said to me, you just said to me, you just said, you just said, you just said, my friend, you just said, we don't have, this story is not exist in our religion, this is a fabrication, then did your God say to you that he replaced someone instead of Jesus? All he says is they didn't crucify the actual Jesus. No, actually he said, he said they crucify him, Look, because look what happened, he says, the Jews, they say we killed him. Allah, he says, we you know, crucified him not, who the Messiah. How? How that happened? He made it appear to them, which means crucifixion happened. It appeared to them. So the Jews, they were practicing crucifixion of Jesus. Yeah, maybe Simon or maybe uh, See, now, illusion. So now you are, trying to, you are trying to fix the stupidity of this verse. You are trying to, to, to go by maybe. So this is a religion of Mr. B, maybe. Maybe you are talking about Jesus crucifixion. Was he or was not? Your whole religion is a maybe, man. Your how, whole how, religion. How? No, no, maybe. no. The Bible confirmed that Jesus was crucified. The Bible confirmed that Jesus was resurrected. The Quran himself itself says that G, the, the, the Jews they say we killed him. So the Jews they confirmed the death. And actually, I just played the, the video of Sheikh Amran saying, if we were to there. We will have the same con conclusion. What conclusion? That the Messiah was a crucified. The video in front of your eyes. If we, if we were can there, deceive whoever. Your shake, your shake. If he said, if we we are there, if we were there, we as a Muslim, not me as a Christian. If, if, we not, there, if you and I were there, huh? we would also come to the conclusion. We are going died. to get the same conclusion that he died. So the Jews, they get conclusion of something happened for real. Because this is a true conclusion. The Quran, but you highlight the Quran, it. Made the, the, Quran, anyway the Quran can claim. Appear. Listen. You can appear anything. No. Okay. No. Hold on. The, the Jews. Okay. Hold on. Who is the Allah. one? Who is the Allah one who made it? Who is the one who made it appear to them? Allah. Okay. So did Allah lie to them? Allah lied to who? To the Jews. To the because Jews? he made it. He made them see it was Jesus. Yes, because they're trying to kill. Okay, so they Allah, so Allah, okay, so Allah, you know, Allah hold, hold on. you know what you just said? Do you notice what you just said? I said to you, did Allah lie to them? He said, yes, because the Jews trying to kill him. So Allah, in order to save somebody, he have to lie. He tricked them because he cannot change their heart. It's hardened. Yeah, but by lying, correct? Is it by lying? It's not like he got someone to come tell a lie. It's he a lie because this is a lie. And I tell a lie. This is bigger than a lie. This is the biggest lie in history. If this is true, because because there's a, there's almost three billion a human being. They believe now that Jesus was crucified. So if this is a, was a lie, and who is the one who caused the lie to happen? Is Allah. So Allah is the best of the deceivers. Is Satan. Who is the one who made the Christian believe in Jesus' crucifixion? Who is the one? Who is the one behind? Who is the one behind Jesus was in the cross story? Is it the Christian or Allah? Based on this story here. Can you repeat it again? Sorry. 
This, when, when the Christian, they believe that Jesus was in the cross. And Allah is the one who made Jesus appear to be in the cross. Is it the fault of the Christian to believe in it? Or the fault of Allah who made it appear? It is the, the result of Allah make it appear. Because he saved okay. Isa. So your God Allah is the, the one who deceived us and lied to us. So your God Allah... We know Isa your, was the most righteous. Okay, who, who is the one, let me ask you. Who is the one who will get the benefit of making Jesus uh, or making people believe that Jesus died in the cross? Can you give me who is the one who will get the benefit of that? Such a belief. Is that Allah or Shaitan? If somebody believed that Isa, Jesus, Isa if, benefit, if somebody believed in Jesus in the cross, doesn't care for the question. If Jesus, if, if people believe that Jesus died in the cross, who is the one going to get the benefit of this story? Allah or Satan? I don't see how shaitan is going to benefit. Why are you asking this question? Okay, so, how does shaitan benefit? Anything? Okay, I thought shaitan benefit from lies. Well, according to you, shaitan work for Allah. So he do whatever uh, it's, it's not according to me. It's not according to me. The Quran says so. Are you against the Quran now? There is no verse in Quran that says, oh, shaitan does. Okay, uh, let us go Allah and see. Did. Let us go and see. Quran. I think you're just making my, my it friend, up. my friend. Let us see. People will laugh in a you're second. Always telling lies about okay, Islam we, we, we will you. see. We will see. Yeah, uh, hold on, Abdul. Come on, take it easy. You know. Okay. Listen. Here we go. This is the Quran. Let me, let me let me put the let me put the verse for I'm you. I'm not even. And then everybody, I'm everybody Indian will Indian. laugh. Everybody will laugh. Here we go. The Quran says that Shaitan he was deceived by Allah. Do you agree? Shaitan deceived by Allah. Yeah, yeah and, he, sure. and he is Maybe okay. He sure, he said, guys, did you hear it? He says, sure. Okay. So Allah, why he, are you not going to deceive Shaitan? Shaitan is Allah. He deceived Shaitan to Allah become. The, you cannot uh, try okay. to understand all Allah's okay. plans. But, but by deceiving him, he became a, what? A believer, a good person, or a bad person? Who Shaitan? When Allah he decide to deceive Shaitan, what is the purpose of deceiving him? I don't know, but Shaitan, we don't care about if Shaitan... Why you don't care for him? He's your cousin. <laughs> Shaitan used to be angel, now he's a jinn. Not no, my concern. This is, in, is, in Islam, you are obviously, obviously you are an ignorant. In Islam, Shaitan is not, a, is not an angel. He's a genie. He used to be angel. No, where See, are you? I saw where, you trick all where, my where brothers. Where you got this from? You said, oh, he tried to bow down. But where, where you got this from? Cat? Where you got, why where, the cat where you got your the info? Bark? Where you got your yes, info? You know, we understand that uh, he used to be angel. Then he okay. Listen, listen. Where it says that Jibri, uh, sorry, uh, Shaitan used to be an angel. Well, it is implied that he did not. He he did not bow down to hmm. Adam, uh -huh. and then when he become banished to to earth, he is a jinn. He become uh -huh. jinn. Oh, so in the heaven he was angel, and then Allah. He made him a, a genie when he came to the earth. Yes. Uh, this is a, it like sound like a transgender story. No, this is not a true. There's nowhere in the Quran it says that. You are a, <laughs> you are a foolish man. Yeah. But Allah can do that. You don't understand but what you are Allah making things up. Does. Okay, can you show me a reference? Go ahead. I'm listening. Show you a reference for what? That Allah he show made him what? made that him Allah that he was an angel. Can you show me where it says he was an angel? Because he was an can angel, you show me, Can you show me a reference that uh, you tell everyone, oh, Muhammad, he raped this one, he raped Sa Safiya, he raped everyone. Sure, I can but show you. No why not? For, for sure. Say, oh, sure, I can show you a reference. No problem. But why oh, are you topic? Why are you changing topic? Says, I will show you a reference. No problem. I will show you about no, Safiya. my point is, you know why I don't need to show you reference? Because sometimes uh, you don't have a reference. Okay. So why I need to give you a Challenge me for a reference. Go ahead. Make a challenge. Show me. Show me. What? You like to tell everyone on here you deceive, tell lies about Islam and say, hmm. oh, um, Muhammad, he raped many women, uh, you know, and you, okay, I will give you maybe, because we cannot prove Aisha understand what is intercourse at uh, nine year old. Hmm. So maybe, may, but also that is uh, ancient time, brother. It's like 700, 600. Six, uh, six hundred, six, seventh century. So mm. time is a little bit different. But you try to say like, oh, Muhammad, he raped 
he raped uh, he raped Safiya. Okay, so do you want me to show you that uh, Muhammad he raped Safiya now? What do you want? I'm I'm uh, I'm not sure what you want. You do not. I guarantee you can you can only prove some. Uh, you cannot prove it in writing. Nobody gonna. Anyways, nobody gonna write. Oh yeah, the Muhammad okay. he raped. So in the front, he okay. So in the front of everybody, if I show you the reference and you, I made you read it yourself. What you would do? If you show me a reference, what? About you Muhammad, gonna show me that about Muhammad, something, you're about gonna Muhammad show me something, raping, about something? Muhammad raping Safiya, and not only Muhammad, the Muslim they rape Safiya too. Maybe the, the other Muslim did, but Muhammad he is not gonna. Do okay, it. did Muhammad? So Muhammad uh, okay, is my friend. Okay, my my friend, my friend, no problem. You don't no, understand. No problem, no problem. So you're if, Muslim. You said, you said, I cannot give you a reference. I want you to make me a, uh, give me a promise. If I give you a reference right now and make you read it in front of you in the screen, are you willing to apologize for being a donkey? <laughs> uh, okay, I will. I will apologize, donkey. But I will also take it to probably. I will have to take for more interpretation. Maybe Sheikh Osman or uh, Hamza Den or something because. Uh, okay, I have, an, I, I have an offer for you. I have an offer for you. Why you don't call those you call them shake? They are potatoes. They don't dare even to speak to me. Call them right now and let them join the conversation. Well, I don't have their phone number. They're a very big person. I'm just... They are a very big person. You can see them in the street. They are potatoes. You know, this guy, you know, he, he, he sells tomato, tomato sauce. What do you mean big person? Who are they? They don't even have a school. Who sells tomato sauce? What, what, uh, what uh, big person? Who are they? I mean, who? they are nobody. What do you mean big? What do no, you mean they are big person? Convert, con, you don't like Sheikh Uthman because our friend, I like him very much. Many okay, my, my friend, many Sheikh, white Sheikh Uthman. Sheikh Uthman is the one who said that Muhammad was a pagan. Don't you know? Here we go. I can play the video for you. He was a pagan before. Okay, so Muhammad was pagan. Okay, so yeah. so Sheikh Uthman he admit that Muhammad was pagan for forty years of his life. Correct. Yes, because okay. he did not know the right. truth. So he Muhammad was understand. worshiping. No. Oh, so Muhammad, you just said yes, and you agree with Sheikh Uthman that Muhammad he was worshiping idol for forty years. How he worshiped well, idols? Actually, he, there he, is no reference he, he to bought, prove he who he down to them. No, no, you are the one who mentioned Sheikh Uthman. Sheikh Uthman, he agree that Muhammad is not Abrahamic. Yes, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, know, right? He because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Have, the people so we don't know. He, he is not Abrahamic. He did not come from Abrahamic faith. This is what Sheikh Uthman said. And this guy is not a Sheikh, he's a potato. He's a coward. So listen what happened now. He is a Sheikh. Listen, 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 listen what happened. Sheikh. If Muhammad was not Abrahamic, he he become later Abrahamic? Yes. Okay. Because Gabriel yes. visit him. And Thank you. Then Thank you. You see, people will laugh at you and will laugh at Sheikh Uthman. That's mean Muhammad is not from Ishmael. Because if you become later Abrahamic, Abrahamic means to be from the children of Abraham. So Muhammad, when Muslim they lie to us, oh, shut up, shut up. Why, hold on, hold on, Listen, hold on. Look what happened to why you now. So be, Muhammad is not Abrahamic. Muhammad is not Abrahamic. So Muhammad is a fraud. He did not, he is not from Ishmael. Because you just admitted, that you agree with Sheikh Uthman that he is not Abrahamic and he is not from the Abrahamic faith. So he has nothing to do with Abraham. So he is not from the children of Abraham. So you Muslim, you lie. When you claim hold on, hold that on, you are, you, you Muhammad because is how he cannot be. How is that any proof that he is not related to to uh, Ishmael? Because you don't, you can lose Abrahamic way along the. Because how how many thousand years ago is Ishmael? Maybe the Bedouin Bedouin is not, don't have to. My friend, doesn't matter. Uh, I don't, I don't care now. You see, you 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 yourself, you confess now that Muhammad is not from Abraham. So you Muslim, you lie to us, and Muhammad is a liar when he claimed that he is from Abraham and he is from the children of... Genealogy-wise, if it's for his gene, genetic, he is from Ishmael. But you just said, but, but you just said, to, but you just said uh, he is not Abrahamic. Abraham. You just, you just said, okay, you what, what is gene, what is gene, okay, 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 okay. Let, let me ask you, let, let me ask you, let me ask you. Okay, to be uh, non-Abrahamic with idols, and that is why Rasulullah Muh went and change all, destroy all of those uh, idols. Muhammad, because Muhammad, 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 he didn't know Muhammad. it's not his fault he is born uh. outside of Ibn, and that is why we set everything correct. Okay, Muhammad, with, uh, Muhammad, listen Jibreel. carefully. I want, so, I want you to focus on me. I want you to focus on me. Fine, I focus. Did, 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 did the Quran confirm that Ishmael, he went 
Dr. Makka? Yes. Okay. You agree, right? That Ishmael and Abraham, they were there. Yes, and so they who, built Kaaba. So who was the first messenger who was sent to Mecca? Abraham and Ishmael, correct? Yes, that's okay, correct. Thank you. Yes. So how you explain to me, Muhammad saying, that before Muhammad there was nobody, nobody came to, to Mecca? What do you mean? He said nobody What do you mean? The Quran Mecca. says that there's nobody came to Mecca before. There's no messenger. And I cannot remember where it is written that Ishmael came to build the... Uh, I will show you, no problem. I remember you don't Hebrew. remember. You don't remember, I do, okay? Here we go. This is your prophet. My prophet who predicted... Chapter? He, he predict all the building in... Uh, yeah, 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 he predict, yeah, we will see that. People are laughing. So... Did anyone came to Mecca before? I see Arabic. I cannot read it. Hmm. You're showing Arabic. Text. Read the chapter 34, verse number 44. Uh, one second. Uh, okay, I read Yusuf Ali. Hmm. But we had not given them books which they could study, nor sent messenger to them before the as warners. <laughs> so, how Abraham, how Abraham was there and Ishmael, I ask you, everybody my witness, I ask you, was Abraham and Ishmael there? They came to Mecca, you said yes? Well, they built Kaaba, but uh, they did not have book or scripture to spread to the people. No, and also, no, I don't think no many they people have book, they have Kaaba. books. No, they have books. Here we go. This is your Quran. Says Sohafu Ibrahim and Musa. So Abraham, he have a book. Here we go. Read it. This is your book. You are just trying to duct tape your stupid prophet. Chapter eighty-seven, verse number nineteen. The scriptures of Ibrahim and the scriptures of Musa. Sohaf is even pages. His books. So how how Abraham he came to Mecca and with him is Ishmael. And the, the other verse in the Quran says, well, Muhammad, he was the first one sent here. And before you, nobody gave them books or scriptures or no messengers came to. You see the stupidity? You Maybe want... they did not come to be messenger, but they came only to construct. No, the Quran says that Abraham, he said to his people, what are you talking about? Come on, my friend. He spoke, you know, he, he, he built the Kaaba, he have his children's, you know, he have his children's and he taught his children's. So Abraham, he did not speak to his people. That would be funny. So when the Muslim, they claim that Muhammad is a prophet, he went to Mecca and uh, Abraham was there and he is the one who built the Kaaba and he's Allah, he sent him and he, you know, he gave him books as you see. And then we find that the Quran says there is no books was given to people of Mecca and they never have any messenger before Muhammad. Muhammad is the first one. And this is again so chapter, you, again chapter eighty-seven, I need verse to number read eight. Whole, whole uh, chapter because read it, no problem. Read that, you know, read it. Okay, chapter eighty-seven, my friend. Chapter eighty-seven, verse number nineteen, and the other chapter here is a chapter thirty-four, verse number forty-four. Muhammad is a fraud. Forty-four. Forty-four. Let me read. I already read this one. You. And their predecessors rejected the truth. See? So he was there. The predecessor rejected the truth. Hmm. They had not received the tent of what we had granted to those. yet. When my friend, they rejected yeah, my so messenger. what's saying? What's saying? Hold on. This is even more stupid. Because the one before them refused the truth. But he just told them, we never gave them the truth before. I think you are not interpreting correctly. Because, My friend, you can open any interpretation you want. Muhammad, it says here, thought we did not give them any scriptures that they might have to study, nor we did send them any war nor before you. Never, never. So, so what does Ibn Kathir say about this? Because Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir says, Kathir Ibn Kathir knows says, a lot more than, uh, some okay, if I, so, so, so listen, listen now. If I show you Ibn Kathir, are you going to cry and you say, I don't accept Ibn Kathir or do you accept Ibn Kathir? 
I accept Ibn Kathir. I, exp I accept uh, maybe Ibn Abbas. In okay. Okay. Let, let, let us listen to this. So the Quran says it clearly that we never send a warner to them before you. Who is the one can explain that? Is Ibn Kathir. He's talking about hold on, 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 hold on. He's saying like uh, in Muhammad's lifetime, he did not hold send on, it. It's not like, oh, I didn't send on. it a thousand years So even, years this, one even on? this one is confusing to the Abdul. Even this one, he can't explain it. Even this one, Ibn Kathir. Why Ibn Kathir, he have extra information? Ibn Kathir is a good source of information. Well, isn't but, Ibn uh, Kathir, is it Ibn Kathir the same person who says that the sperm is coming from the, the ribs of the women? Do you accept him now? He didn't say ribs of the women. He said he that, said and he agreed with the Quran. The, the Quran same says backbone and ribs. The Quran? And if you look at, you know, testicle is in front of the backbone. You're not. You're just going. The testicles for are in the front of the backbone. When the last time you look at your testicle, my friend? Do you have any? <laughs> of course, it's called I the backbone. It. I mean, it's in the back. It's in, your, the, it's in your. It's in your. My together. friend, my friend. You put the Christian my, together. My, my, all my friend, is smaller you, than you, my. You Muslims, you Muslims, your, your anus, uh, your backbone extend beyond man. beyond your anus. I mean, what do you mean? What are you talking about? You have your anus. No, the okay, end, the end of the backbone is your anus. Hello, there is a hole there. Abdul, listen carefully. And then the, the testicles are in the front. Yes, in the front. Okay, so now, but, okay, yeah, we will, we will the go backbone. there and we will laugh. We will go there and we will laugh. And actually, do you want to show you right now about the big theory? You will die laughing. You will say, I don't accept him. You want to show you? I will accept Ibn Kathir. Why do you always say, oh, you won't accept, you won't accept? I because you will not. Okay, okay, let, us, let us make an experiment. Here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. I will put it for you on the screen. In two seconds, you will say, I don't accept Ibn Kathir. This is not true. Just wait. Here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. Read for me. I will put it for you on the screen. And you, you know, people would die laughing. Why right you now. never call the sheikh? Why you never give call me their, the, give me their number, the, give me their Hamza. Skype to call them. Here we go. Just name the sheikh for me. Tell me he is willing to call you and talk to you. I will call him right now. As Sheikh you speak Uzman. Uzman. Will... Give me his Skype. Uh, okay, give me his Skype. I'm stop stop Skype. crying. How am I going to call him, my friend? Stop crying. Bring your you pick on bring your step, bring, like you. bring this potato, but, but my friend. He is the one. You have to he, stop, stop, job, stop, stop, stop. He, he ran away. I, I called him too. Seven times he hang up on me in less than five minutes. Go watch it. It's in, in YouTube. The coward, he ran away. That's he did not even let me ask any ago. question. Why you not do it I'm now? Doing... It's like... Uh, I, can do, I can do it anytime. You know, he hang up on me. The coward, he did not let me talk. He, that he called me time. names. How come you're not My friend, all of you, now, all of you are a bunch are of potatoes. Friend? My uh, Skype is uh, open. Listen, listen. You were able to call me so easy, correct? So why they cannot? Give me their Skype, so I will I call think, them. Shut up. Listen, listen, listen. They, they read don't read me, read with me, read read with me, read with me. Ibn Kathir, it says, meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, which is referring to her chest. You said this is not true, and this is Ibn Kathir, and you said you accept Ibn Kathir. According to Ibn Kathir, women, they have a sperm, sexual fluid, coming from their, the, the location of the necklace, actually, not only the chest. And you said you will accept whatever Ibn Kathir said. Read it. You accept now? Hold on, your screen not showing. It says, uh, meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman, which is referring to her chest. Shabib bin Bihir reported from Ikrima, who narrated from Ibn Abbas that he said, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. What he's talking about, the, maybe he's talking about uh, uh, sexual fluid that is from breast, right? <laughs> that is uh, milk. They are talking about intercourse. Intercourse, when you Muslims, when you have sex with your wife, your wife are different from the rest of, of mankind. Your wife, only Muslim wives, they have sexual fluid coming from their chest. Is that true? And what year? What so year? According to, according to Muslims, breast. only Muslim women, on, they on. have a breast testicles. Your wife, she, are you married? Your wife, she have a breast testicles. She don't have boobs. She have breast testicles. Read it. It says it clearly, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, between bracket, a fluid. The women of the, the fluid of the women is yellow, fine in texture. The child will not be born except from both of them, i.e., their sexual fluid. So, what makes the child? There's a sexual fluid come from the women ribs, and there's sexual fluid come from the backbone of the man. And the Where child. Where does this will... narration come from? Who are they quoting in the narration? 
You said Ibn Kathir, you accept Ibn Kathir, and you said to me, you will not accept Ibn Kathir. I said to you, you will not accept Ibn Kathir in two seconds. You will say, why you are saying that? <laughs> I will accept Ibn Kathir. So now you are questioning who, where he comes from. I just, I'm not uh, saying I don't accept. I just want to understand. Okay, so do you I'm accept, do you accept that your God, Allah, he is saying the truth that sperm of the man coming from the backbone. There's no testicles. May Allah bless your testicles. And women, no, she have I testicles think in there. Allah maybe and, said and that, Allah. but not, not Allah. Well, this, no, this is the Quran, Imam Abdul. You are the one who said to me, I accepted Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir is explaining the Quran. Which Quran verse this one is? Give me which Quran verse. I mean, يُخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ This is chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7. Okay, let me check my actual website. Chapter, oh, which one? Chapter 86? 86, verse number 6 and 7. You can read the whole chapter. I mean, the whole chapter is few verses. Very funny. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, he was created from a fluid. You know, everything's from between the backbone and the ribs. This one, who is talking about here? What well, is talking about the breast testicles? So you Muslim, you Muslim females. I'm not trying to make fun, by the way, but this is what the Quran is saying. So Muslim women, they are the only one. Their boobs are not boobs; they are testicles. They are round, yes. They have nipple, yes. But reality is, according to the Quran, those are not boobs; those are testicles. So you Muhammadan, you are married to men. You're not married to women. They don't have boobs. Christian women, they have breast. Muslim women, they don't. But I saw actually. I'm looking at diagram right now. Huh. Semen, semen vesicle is between backbone and the ribs. Testicle is lower, but seminal vesicle. My friend, this is, is talking about two individuals, not one person. One is the man, and one is the woman. I remember you are the one who said to me, "Why you are saying I want to accept Nikathir? <laughs> Why you are saying that? this is Nikathir? It's, it's your sheikh, the one you like." We just gave him a call. He answered. The only religion who tell the truth about women, it's Islam. I told many people, don't marry, don't get married. Those women are, they are men. They have breast testicles. You know, you will see a guy like he is excited. He want to take his wife to the bedroom. And now she is taking off her bra. Like, that. what the heck? Those are testicles, you idiot. They are not breast. They were created from a spurting fluid stemming from between the backbone and the rib cage. Mm. I need, I, you know what? I'm going to open my Quran because you you show on website. I'm going to look. Give me one second. Mm. And what's your point? Okay, so maybe. What do you mean, what's my point? All the conversation until now, you did not get my point. Your prophet is a liar. This is Quran. This is Allah speaking. Who is the God who will believe? That women, they have a breast testicles and their sexual fluid coming from their nipples. Do Muslim women have orgasm from their nipples? Why you say this? this. So what's your point? Like what, Here what's we your... go again. What's your point? You know, that dude, when he is dizzy, he just say a word from his mouth just to uh, say anything. You know? What do you mean, what's your point? I just told you. You just gave me that question again and again. What's your point? I, let me repeat. Your stupid God, he cannot be God because he thinks that women, they have sexual fluid coming from their ribs. This is stupid. How God he say that? What kind of God he say that? Even Shushu Mumu, God did not say that. I mean, the Shish, -shish, -shish Kebabs did not say that. Even Mr. Donkey did not say that. I mean, how stupid this God is? He's trying now. Muhammad suddenly he became professor in physiology and biology, and Allah is the one who taught him. And then we look. This is stupid. This is very. Let me dummy. read. Hold on. Let let me read whole all whole Surah eighty six. Give me one second. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, by mm -hmm. the sky and the night visitant therein. Uh -huh. And what will explain to you what the night visitant is? It is the star of piercing brightness. There is no soul but has protected over it. So he's talking about star. He's talking about night visit. Well, this is how stupid your prophet is. I mean, what the stars have to do with the nipples now? You see, your prophet, 
Your a prophet, your prophet is disconnected man. He is suffering from the flight of thought. So what the stars have to do with the nipples and testicles? Listen, let me read, okay? Can you let me? You're reading. No I'm soul. asking you a question. I'm asking you a question. No okay, but what I'm the stars? What the stars? What is the connection? What is the, con what is the connection, my friend? What is the connection between the stars and testicles? He is talking about star piercing brightness. So what does have to do with the topic after it? Why he start talking about testicles? Now let man but think from what he is created. Hmm. He is created from a drop emitted, hmm. proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Hmm. Surely Allah is able to bring him back to life. Hmm. The day that all hidden things shall be made manifest, okay. man will have no power and no helper. Hmm. By the firmament which returns in its round, and by the earth which opens out for the hmm. gushing of springs or the sprouting of vegetation. Okay. Behold, this is the world that distinguishes good from evil. It is not a thing for amusement. As for them, they are but plotting a scheme, and I am planning a scheme. Therefore, grant a delay to the unbelievers. Give respite to them gently. So this is unambiguous. This is ambiguous verse. You understand that? Ambiguous, is... ambiguous. Uh, you yeah. don't know that Allah put. Let me ask there you. Are so that how are it's ambiguous? Literal. How it is ambiguous? And Ibn Kathir is giving it interpretation. It says here you don't need interpretation. It's in the he's not Abdul, interpreting. You are the, the word one of... who said why you are laughing when I say to you I accept Ibn Kathir. You remember you forgot? I accept Ibn Kathir. Okay, so then accept Ibn Kathir and stop playing games. Okay, my friend. Interpretation okay. because uh, this is an ambiguous verse. It's it's not in a bigger ways because he have explanation for it. <laughs> How oh, it's ambiguous, Mr. Ambiguous, and you give it interpretation. I mean, what's wrong with those Muhammadan? Why you call us Muhammadan? Because you're a we Muhammadan, you follow Muslim Muhammad, because you don't follow you, Allah. You believe in baby who Abdul. get his diaper changed. Well, okay, uh, you, it's you who believe in a baby who have no diaper, according to the Quran. Jesus in the cradle, he speak as adult, mature. So you are accusing your God, Allah, of being a liar. Muhammad, he was 40 years as a pagan, as Sheikh Uthman Potato said, the tomato sauce guy, and you agreed. So Jesus, he did, never was and never be okay, a person. I, I need to research this. I, I will apologize. I, uh, I, I don't have adequate explanation for it. Okay, but I, I, I made a condition for you. I said, if I show you, you would agree that you're a donkey. And you <laughs> promised. And you, made uh, you have to be donkey. <laughs> so, Fine, but you're okay. I will. So, no, no, I'm no, donkey, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Too. I want to hear it. Say, you, you made a promise that you will say you are a donkey if I show you. And now it's time for you to say that you are a donkey. Please keep your promise. You're a man. Respect yourself. Okay, I'm donkey until I can get further. All right. Further. Thank you very much, Mr. Donkey, for calling me. Let your Mr. Mule, Mr. Osman, call me. Okay. We will wait. We will wait. Muslim, they complain. Why this guy don't talk? Don't you let them talk to me. Let your mule. You are a donkey. He's a mule. Let us see if he can do better. Is it my fault? Your sheikh are a best of the mules. You are a donkey. That doesn't change anything. Still the same family. You know, this religion is weird, stupid. Who is next? At least he is, he, you know, I respect on him that he keep his promise. The rest of the Muslims, they don't. I mean, this guy here, you know, he keep his promise. That's good. This is real. They don't do that usually. Do we have any Mohammedan want to say anything? It's a very stupid cult, very stupid religion. Who, who in the world want to believe in such a garbage? And this is the God you want to convince me to believe in? The penis God, the vagina God, the breast God? You know, and you know now, do you understand why I'm still single? I'm not going to marry a woman 
take her to the bedroom, take off her clothes, and then what? What the heck? She have two testicles. I'm, I'm terrified. I'm literally terrified. Because I believe Allah tell the truth. And Muhammad, he confirmed where the sexual flow is coming from, and he confirmed that it is fine and the women sexual fluid, it's fine and yellow. And if you ask any doctors, they will say to you, if a woman, she have such a yellow, that means she have a sexual infection. Why it is yellow? I don't care who wanna call me, text me if you are a Muslim only. If you are not, don't text me. I will block you. Anyone? All those you call them shake, they avoid speaking to me. They are tomato sauce. They bleed from nobody touching them. Any Mohammedan? You know, there's things Muhammad he said, we cannot deny it, it's true. As an example, Shaitan he fought a lot when he hear the Muslims say Allahu Akbar. I mean, me myself, I understand. It must be true. Because this is how it makes sense, the word of the Quran. See, some people, they are burning the Quran. I don't know why. Fart at it. Don't burn it. By the way, be, be careful. Fart is a flammable. Look what Muhammad said. This is, the, this is the prophet of God. The expert of farting. Prophet, he said, Abu Huraira, the father of the cat, he said, uh, Idawa boys already refuted the backbone. No, they did not. I got them busted. Go watch my videos. The guy in this Idawa stupid channel, a bunch of kids, he said that the word uh, backbone obviously mean his penis. The backbone is a bone. Go check that. He said, if we look at the dictionary, for the word backbone, it's mean the penis, the male member. Go read it. It's just a, a bunch of kids. They can say whatever they want. Anyway, they refuted it already. So Ibn Kathir, he did not speak Arabic, and those guys in, in, in YouTube, they know Arabic better than Ibn Kathir. And suddenly the backbone become a penis. Why? The Muslim penis is made of bones. Is that the new discovery? This is why the wife of Muhammad, she called his penis ponytail. Like, what the heck with this religion? They come to us with stories. We don't know from where. Read carefully. Muhammad said, when shaitan hear the call to prayer, he turn his back. Look at the shaitan. Not only he want to fart, he have to turn his back at Allah. Like, what the heck? And he break wind. That's deep. That's really deep. Ah, this guy is asking me again, why you did not show me? You know, this guy is asking for more. Coward, why you hang up on your call? Because we are done, I thought, but now you are asking me. You didn't give more proof because you said, okay, okay fine. You know what? I admit, I'm a man. I admit. Okay, I cannot explain this 86, but you say, I, I saw in the Bible. That oh, hold on, hold on. You just send me, you just have to marry You just send me, you just send me a text. You just, you just send me a text saying you did not show me that Muhammad, he raped Sophia. That's correct. You, you run away like, uh, okay, so if like I, a donkey yourself. So uh, let me, let us take another promise from you. If I show you now that Muhammad, he raped Sophia. Are you going to say, I don't want you to say that you are a donkey. Are you willing to say to me that Sheikh Uthman is a donkey? Well, I'm, I'm not, I don't know him personally. No problem, but you are learning from him. Well, that's because, uh, you know, he came, he had three people come 
David Wood, friend, Sam I, 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 there was no, you know, they did not debate. debate. They did not debate. They are talking about philosophy and stupid things. A bunch of kids, all of them. I'm asking you now. If I show you that you're a prophet, he did rape Sophia with the clear evidence. Are you willing to call the one who is your favorite a donkey? Actually, he's not my favorite. Who is your favorite? Which one you want? Who is your favorite? Well, I watched the Hamza's den, and he Hamza, the he, guy he, who he, sell he, uh, burqa. Yeah, the guy he sell hijab, but you, <laughs> you know, it's okay for a guy to sell hijab for his deal. No, it's not Why okay. You... No, it's not okay. This is not Islamic because a man he should not be the man who sell to women. Especially women, they are coming to buy hijab. You know, those what are. What do you mean? You cannot sell yeah. to women. Well, that is no. Gross. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. Do you remember the story? Do you remember the story of Nabhan Tamar? No, enlighten me. Story. Nabhan Tamar, oh. a woman, she came to him to the store. He said to her, "Get inside the store so I can show you better stuff." She went inside. He started touching her, touching her vagina and her breast, and then he went to the prophet. He said, "I did with this woman everything the man he do." With the, with the with the women, except sexual intercourse. The prophet, he said, it's okay. Prophet said it's okay? Yeah. He said, Allah, he forgave all sin except a lemon. This is a lemon. I, I don't know this. I just know that Hamza, he destroyed one of your disciples. He called the Hamza den, and he said, oh, how Hamza asked him, what is the reward for rape in the Bible? It's to marry, you get to marry the girl you rape. So okay. actually your whole religion Okay, is hold, okay. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, if I show you that all Muslim You're countries, hold on, just to show you, just to show you how stupid this Hamza is. First of all, it is not a reward for the person who rape a woman to marry her. That's a lie. This guy is a potato. Oh, let, that him, is let him call me and I will get him busted. Secondly, what if I you. show you right now, <laughs> what if I show you right now that you Muslims in all Islamic countries, they practice forcing the man who rape a woman to marry her. Do you challenge me? Forcing the man who rape a woman who to rape marry. a woman to marry her. Islamic countries, and not Christian countries. You spread lies already about rape. You say okay, we need hold on. Here we go. Let me let me let me show you on the screen. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hmm. Here we go. And you're afraid of hold on, hold on. We will go one by one. One by one. We don't say. We don't say things. One by one. One by one. One by one. One by one. And you coward, you don't show nothing. Okay, let us see. I will show it. Here we go. And you won't admit that all you All right, are all right, all right. Uh, you don't call All Hamza right, because... all right. Read for me. This is your religion and this is your Sharia law. Outrage after Sharia law ordered, the court ordered, the rapist to marry 13 years old victim. Read it. Is it on the screen? Yes. This is Sharia law. This is not any law. Know. This is according to Islam. Sharia law from your fake, uh, you have fake degree in, in the Sharia law, the fake one? Well, yeah, you I, you know, I, if I have a fake degree, I'm, how come I'm busting all the Muslim then? Here we go, it's in front of your eyes, you I get you busted. This is, not, Sharia not, law. this is the Sharia law in Malaysian country. It's an Islamic country run by Sharia law that a person who rape a child, she is 13 years old, they order him to marry her. This is according okay, to what? So one case this is according, this is according to Islam. You're gonna bring one case in what? 2013. You're gonna bring one case from some corrupt No, not judge. one case. I just search in Google. All Islamic countries practice that. Case. Potato, okay, let me show you more. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Marine, more. the well, rapist in Arab countries. Here we go, hold on, hold on, hold on, here we go. All Arab countries, they order that. Here we go. Uh -huh. This is your Islamic website. And okay. This and this is a Muslim woman. Prophet. She is making the making the article. Read, read with me. Read with me. Muhammad this is a Muslim. Uh, this That's is a this is a Muslim woman. Muslim women making the article. Marrying your rabies law changing in Arab countries, reforming culture or explore others. All Islamic so countries they religion. practice forcing the marriage into rabies. This is not in the Bible, you liar. And the Bible says, if a man he lay in for, with the women and she did not scream, ask him for help. That man and that woman, if they are not married, he have to marry her. 
And not only that. Yeah, that's a risk. Listen, listen, it potato. Listen, listen, potato. Now, <laughs> let, let me ask you. Let me ask you. See? So the Bible gives details about rape and the punishment. There's a death penalty there. What is the punishment of rape in the Quran? Zero. What you showing me? I'm showing you your articles. This is Muslim article made by Muslims. Muslim countries, they practice marrying the rapist to the victim. I can show you tons of those until now. Yemen, and, and why Tunisia, they do Morocco, why they Algeria, do Syria, Iraq, Egypt, you name it. All of them, they practice the same thing. The rapist, he marry the one who he raped. So when you Hamza, he says something, we laugh at him because he's a potato, he's a donkey. He do not know what religion he belonged to. And now let me ask you in front of everybody, if there is a single verse in the Quran against rape. I don't think rape is really mentioned in Quran. Okay, are you, are you saying to me, your God is stupid Allah? He have time to tell us about- Have respect, have respect. Hold on, I don't respect Islam and you know that. You don't call me if you, don't, if you, if you ask me well, for respect. I don't respect your- uh, don't, Who crazy cares, don't respect me, no problem. Here we go, listen, 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 listen. Here we go. This is the rapist Muslims. This is the rapist. This is the rapist Muslims. This is the rapist Muslims, and I will show you from the Quran. It's allowed even to force people into rape. Let me show you. It says it's changing. From They're the changing Quran. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And not only you, you, you don't marry them. I, you, I wish you marry them here. Here you force them to rape to make money from them. Let us read together. Read and laugh. Is that your Quran or this is my book? Remember, you call yourself already a donkey, so if I, I'm call, waiting you, for you. If I call you a donkey, don't be upset. I mean, already you deserve the title. I'm not upset. This is a chapter 24, verse number 33. Is it true, it says, that you can force your daughters into prostitution and Allah is all merciful? There's no penalty. What is the verse? Chapter 24, verse number 33. When you force them into prostitution, this is a rape. Because it says you force them, force them not. And if you force Let them, those who cannot afford to marry keep themselves chaste until Allah enriches them out of His bounty. Okay. Hmm. How that, what, tra uh, what translation you like me to show you? <clears throat> what What is your favorite translation? Put it on the screen. What translation you like? Because you might you might make a, an excuse say I don't like this translation. No, I'm not make excuse. Okay. I never made one excuse. All right. Okay, go on. Okay, 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 read. Okay, okay, read. Okay, read. Okay, read. Read. Those who cannot afford the marriage uh, should be continent on continent. Mm. They should be content. Mm. You, you, uh, you can read, read, read here. Let, let me, don't, don't, waste, don't, don't waste my time. And force not your maids into prostitution. If they desire chastity, in order that you make money gain, you know, from it. And then, but if any of you compels them, which means force them into prostitution, and after such a thing, Allah is all merciful. Here we go, Muslim men, they are forcing their maids and their servants and their slaves into prostitution. If there is any penalty, no, those women are forced into rape. You throw the women into a house or a room of a it says force not of a customer. Force yes, not. yes, but there's no penalty. Force them not. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. If they desire chastity. There so is a they... video, there is a video made by the guy, his name is Fifi and his friend. You can find it in Suku film. And the title is it sound like it sound like Why you Allah want to to hold on, Fifi? hold on, hold on. It sound, it sound, it sound, <laughs> and they say they say it looked like you Allah. It looked like Allah gave us a license for prostitution. Read it, watch it. Uh, it's in Suku film. Somebody will post the link for you. So they agree. Mm -hmm. I don't play it because it's not worth it. They are a bunch of kids. So it looked like Allah gave us permission to do prostitution. Not only that, here we find that He give you. Approve to he do will forgive. forgive. Listen, what forgive mean? It means you did something wrong and you forgive. It's but what not is the penalty? I mean, the women, the women, they are raped. The, the Muslims are forcing them to be raped. 
Those are women. They well, don't want to do great. research. Okay. What, kind what kind of religion? What kind of what kind of what kind? Okay, but did, but did you know what? I'm a prostitute and I have the sex. Am I being raped or I'm doing uh, voluntary? She is a slave, but voluntarily he forces her. He says, and if you force her, Allah is all merciful, forgiving. You force her. Shouldn't you punish the one who forced her? And not only that, now he is giving them license. If she agree, it's okay. If she don't agree, Allah is more merciful. In either way, it's okay. And it's only only if they cannot afford a wedding dowry. So you are saying to me it. that you Muslims, if you cannot afford a wedding, you can go to a sex slave, you force her into sex, you take her to bed, you rape her, and you pay her, you pay the owner money. This is Islam. Only if you cannot afford the dowry. Exactly. You... If he can, also, guys, if he cannot is, afford no, the dowry, the Muslims, look, look, how, look how decent they complain about the Bible making the man who slept with the women marry her, but they don't complain about opening a pimp house by the name of Allah and put Allah in the top, and the Muslim, they have a license to open a pimp house as long the girl she agree, it's okay. Yeah, the Soho in the Soho in England is run That's by Muslims. The Soho, in, the Soho in Turkey, the Soho in Turkey, the the pimp house of Turkey is all over. And what is the excuse? The verse in the Quran says we can open a pimp house as long it says here if they agree. Force them not. But if they if you force them, it's okay too. There's no penalty. So what you want from me? To say, what, uh, I, what, I want from you, what I want from you, that from the potato, topic, the bro. one you call him, is, 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 is my joke. You know, we, we laugh at those people, don't you see? If you ever called Hamza, he was Give me his Skype, I will call him right now. Right I, now. I will find his Skype in a couple of days. No, you can but find it now, not in a couple of days, because you will go, you, he will never give you a Skype. I want you to text him in, in the well, chat. I'm not his friend, don't, I don't talk. Don't tell, him don't tell him the reason, don't tell him the reason, promise me. Don't tell him the reason. Tell him, I want to text you, brother. Is that fair, guys? And you give me Skype immediately, and I will call him. Now. I will try. I don't have, I don't have okay, contact. Okay, go and get it. it. I'm waiting for try. you. Go. <laughs> Why I will try? Is it impossible? So you listen to them, but you cannot ask them for your Skype? What the heck is this religion? They are brave. They don't, they don't dare. They are very much intimidated. They knew their size. They knew they are talking to who? They will talk to anyone else. How come they are willing to talk to anybody except me? They put all kind of excuses in order to avoid talking to me. Can you believe? What a coward cult. What a coward cult. <clears throat> potatoes and they say to you why you say potatoes what do you think I will say potatoes for ah okay okay hold on he's asking for the rape of Sophia now hold on let us go back to Sophia Now, uh, I don't want to waste your time and my time. You said to me you want to see the reference for the rape of Sophia, correct? I want to see it. All right. Sahih reference. All right. I will show it to you from Sahih reference. Here we go. <laughs> you cannot give it. You don't have. This is the book of Asir al Nabawiyah, Ibn Hisham. Variant number two, page number 340. You're a prophet. He raped Sophia. And he have a guard in his tent. After he killed her people, he took her to a tent. And right away, he start raping her. And a Muslim guy, he stand next to the tent. No. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me show you. You don't know English. I know. I will use English translation. Here we go. English translation. Read, potato. It's in front of you. The Muhammad, he took the women. He took her to his tent. The man, he was guarding Allah Messenger in the tent. Who is in the tent? Muhammad and Sophia. Why you she is there? Listen, why she is Jewish there? She, he, he just killed her family 10 minutes ago. Yes, because so, they attacked the Muslim first. Okay, hold on. Why you said to me, you want me to prove to you that he raped Sophia, didn't you? 
Yes, this is not proof. Okay, is let's there read. Well, she proof. is in his tent. He took her to his tent. And then, look, we have a guy. He was guarding the tent. Muhammad, he came back and he spent the night at his in, in, in outside. This is Google translation. Out the tent. And then when Muhammad finished raping Safiya, he went out and he said to him, he was wearing his sword. He's ready to kill. He said to him, why you are here? Abu Ayyub, he said, well, I feared that you, from, I feared for you from this woman. She was a woman who you had killed her father, her husband, and her people, and she is an infidel. She was what? Infidel. You killed her. So who? where does it say he raped her? That doesn't say he raped her. I feared from this woman she will kill him. Obviously, he's raping her. Well, otherwise, why he would fear? A woman, this listen, listen, a Abdul, listen, a potato, potato, listen. Uh, uh, if, if somebody killed you and killed your father and then took your sister, I'm not trying to insult you, just give me an example. Do you think your sister will be happy to sleep with that man or she will try to kill that guy? Well, if she can. we believe that she became uh, like a mother of believers because ah, she understands that she So you see, you said to me, you said to me, I challenge you to show me the reference. Now the reference in front of you, you're a prophet here, raped her without her agreeing. Did she say you can take me? Did she say you can kill my parents? Did she say you can have sex with me? The filthy guy did not even wait for the second day. It does not say that. Uh, it says that. Read the consent. holy story. It's, it's, it says here the holy story. Later, later he took her home and later he made her his wife. But he killed her parents. He killed her brother. He killed her husband. Because it's a battle. It's Just a battle. shut up. What battle, man? You Muslims, you drink a lot of bottles yourself. Bottles of urine. Disgusting man. In the Old Testament, when they capture a woman slave from war, they shave her hair for six months, so no man will have a desire to her. And if the man, he want to sleep with the woman, he have to marry her. Not to sleep with her. He have to marry her. She have to be his wife. Potato disgusting cult. So look what we discover. They have a license to be pimps. They have a license to force women to into prostitution. And that they have a zero verse in the Quran about rape. Zero. This God, he have no time to tell us, to make a verse about rape, but he have time to tell us about Suleiman. He was walking in the valley. He heard one of the ants. She said to the other ants, Chris says, please hide. Suleiman will crush you. <laughs> and Muhammadan, stop telling me why you don't talk to this guy and that guy. My Skype is open. All of you, you can talk to me. Isn't it obvious that your potato Abdul, they are scared, terrified to talk to me? So you blame me? Give me their Skype, I will call them. What do you want me to do? Sophia cannot control what the man in her family do? Who care about it? You, you, uh, guy Sophia is a girl. She is, in a, she is a Jew, obviously her belief is a Jew. You kill her, you kill her people, and then you take her to your tent after five minutes. And now Safiya, she don't care for those things. She loves Muhammad, she's in love with Muhammad. She is just a bride. She just get married, actually. She is a fresh bride. And yeah, she converted to Islam willingly. Well, she is a slave now. She's raped already, converted to Islam willingly. Do we have any Muhammadan? Who is a Muhammadan would like to give us a call? Give it a try. Muhammad Nasif, a friend. 
You agreed to call yourself a donkey. I'm so proud of you. And now I want you to go and get the Skype of those ones. You claim that they can refute us. If they refuse to give you their Skype, obviously they are a bunch of potatoes. I'm giving my Skype to everybody, including you, you have it. If they refuse to give their Skype to Christian Prince so that he can call them, it's obvious that they knew their size. They knew how small they are. They knew that they are no match. And they knew that they have a false religion. Because even if a Christian prince is so strong and you are so weak, but if Allah is God and he is with you, you will win. Don't you? Any Mohammedan? Christians, did we have a good time learning about the cult of this religion, the stupidity of this cult? They fool you, they try to make it sound like a religion. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a collection of other religions. Muhammad is a person who hijack all kind of religion around him. The Kaaba from the Arab, the Black Stone from the Arab, and from the from the Hindus, and the, you know all, all garbage he collect around him. Some from the Christians, some from the Jews, some from the Hindus, some from the Sabian, some from everybody. This is a religion of a threesome. The threesome prophet. So he can confuse you. In one hand, he claimed that he is Abrahamic. In the second hand, you don't believe in Abrahamic teaching. You have a God, his name is Allah. And this God is not a spirit. But the God of Abraham, he says right away, God and his spirit. The God of Abraham, he came to Abraham as a man. The Muslim didn't believe that God of Abraham came as a man. He is a hijacker, a fraud, a liar. He used names which you approve so he can fool you. It's like a scam person. He come to your door wearing the uniform of the cable company. He have an ID from the cable company. So you open the door for him and you say, oh, okay, okay. My, my modem is in the uh, bedroom. He go to the bedroom. He take all your jewels and he run away. Thinking that you open the door to who? To a cable guy. Muhammad is the cable guy, but he is the scam one. His cable is not connected except to his penis. But isn't it obvious that this religion, claiming that if you believe in me, I will give you endless penis, a lot of sex, slave for sex? What kind of God is God? This is not God. Only, only mentally ill people accept such a reward because the reward is based in abusing others. Where is justice? Even the heaven is based on abuse. You know, we are struggling against abuse. A human being, he abused other human being. Male, he abused the female. Sometimes females, they abuse the male, actually. Especially in the Middle East. Man, oh man, they beat the hell of them. But Islam approves abuse. It's based on abuse. If you ask the Muslim, the 80,000 little boys who Allah, he promised you in the heaven of Allah, isn't it this is a child abuse? What kind of a person he agree to have little boys to serve him? Is that fair? Boys are created just to be slaves for eternity. Abuse. Even their heaven is based on abuse. Women, they are jailed in their tents, in their bedrooms, just to F them, excuse my language. Abuse. The reward, the heaven of Allah, is the heaven of abuse. By the way, you can make this part a video by itself. You name it, the religion of abuse. Because our video is long, cut to pieces. Each topic.
If you ask yourself, why does God even he create women and why they will be jailed? Qasirat al-Tarf. What Qasirat al-Tarf mean? They are going to be jailed, restrained. Where? In their tents. Il khiyam. What khiyam mean? Tent. And by the way, because this God is a, is a Bedouin God, they think even heaven have tents. Literally. Chapter 55, verse number 72. The Huris, the beautiful fair females, restrained in their tents. Even in heaven, the Muslims are worried that the wife, she will go out and she will sleep with the neighbor. Do you see the sick mentality? They don't trust their women. You see the burqa and the women walking behind you and the women she can't walk alone in the street. All of this is based on one thing. There's no trust. Or there's no marriage. She's a property. He have her. You need to control her until he sell her out again. Or divorce her or she die. So he jail her, he restrain her, he put her. All of this is a form of restraining. Inside the burqa, inside the house, inside the doors, behind the windows. And even in heaven, women are restrained. Why? Because Muslim men, they are not self-confident. His wife, she will sleep around if she see another guy. Immediately. The Abdul wife, she go out. Right away, she will find another guy. Like Aisha and Safwan. They feel in love. Aisha, she made an excuse. So she lost her necklace. Have you ever heard of a woman? She leave the whole army looking for a necklace. And she take nobody with her. And she is the wife of the prophet, which means this is their king. Isn't it obvious that she is going to sleep with somebody? And she stepped overnight away. A teenage girl. She left the camp. She spent the night out. Three witnesses, they saw her sleeping with Safwan. Muhammad, he required four witnesses. And why she left to look for her necklace. By the way, did she find it? It's missing until now. Anyway, I hope today we have a good time. And the purpose of our videos is very much about education. And our education is for free for you guys. So you may enjoy and you may learn. Uh, uh, remember one thing that those videos, I don't know for how long they will be online, but one time I will go. I mean, everybody will go, right? We will die. We are trying our best to teach you, so you teach your children, so the Muhammad and they will not fool them. So do yourself a favor, not to me. You're not doing me a favor. I don't care if you learn or not. It's your business. I do my part. Do yourself a favor. Take notes. Take notes, so time will come. And somebody will try to argue with you about Islam. Then you will not go and search, oh, what's the Christian prince? Where we can find this reference? Where he said that? Where it is? Take notes. Make folders. Folder about women. Folder about rape. Folder about uh, adultery. Folder about forgiveness. Whatever you want. So when you need them, you find them. Even if Christian prince he disappear from this earth. Or time will come, and I will go. You will ask who for reference. I'm not sure who. I hope the Lord He will send better people than me to do the to do the job. And look what Muhammad Nasif he says to me. I got you busted. The rape is allowed in Christianity, and they have to marry a rapist. That is false. And I got you busted. It is you who married the rapist. When a man, he lay down with the women, and the women, she don't scream, obviously she is not raped. Because if she is being raped, she will ask for help. Secondly, if a woman, 
She will marry a rapist. She have to agree. And the man, he cannot divorce her. In the top of that, a Muslim man, he raped a Muslim woman in the time of Umar al Khattab. She was dying in the desert. She said to him, please give me some food, I'm dying. He said, I will sleep with you if you take off your panty. I mean, why this guy, he keep calling me? And he is not a Muslim. Do people have a brain? Here we go, I blocked you. So she said, she came to the caliphate. She said, this guy, he raped me. He forced me to sleep with him in order to, because I was hungry, dying in the desert. Well, Omar, he said, this is your dowry. Imagine, the Muslim charity is not exist in Islam. The man, he will not give her food in the desert or water. She's dying. Unless she open her legs. And the caliphate, he took the side of the man, claiming that this is not a rape. But the woman, she's dying. Which means he will kill her if he did leave her without food and water. He will not give her water, neither food, unless she take off her clothes and sleep with him. Religion of the rape. Thank you all for being here. I hope you guys take reference, learn, educate yourself. And don't forget to join us in our Patreon. That means sometimes they post them, sometimes they don't. You can join us there so you can get notified when we go live on air because YouTube usually don't give notification. And we see you again. Remember, every Friday, every Sunday, 10.30 a.m. This is a fixed date. We go live. However, during the week, I will go, if I go mostly in the same time, in the morning, mostly, but it might be a different time. But this is not a fixed date. Only Friday and Sunday, it's a fixed date. So every Friday, every Sunday, you can invite your friends and you can invite Muslim sheikhs to call me because this is for sure will be a date that will be live on air. Thank you. God bless you. And we will see you again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a fraud. Islam without lies dies. And we prove it every day. Take care. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him.